Amazing packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Two words, cash back. Two more words, you're welcome. Remember that jar in your dresser where you would throw your loose change at the end of the day? Then occasionally, you take the jar to the bank to have it counted and enjoy a bit of a surprise to find there is more in there than you thought. That's Square One Banking, the account with a virtual money jar, and it's offered exclusively by Legacy Bank. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a Welcome you guys here, back at the pregame show. I'm Coach good. Allen, joined alongside Coach Potter. Uh, we're at week eight. Cannot believe that uh, already. It's flown by. Isn't that Y'all crazy? so fast, yep. Yeah, week eight. And back at home, excited yeah. to be playing a little ball at home. Got a really good opponent, of course. Fairview coming to town. And, uh, you know, I've talked to some of the coaches, talked to you, obviously, throughout the week. And one of the repeated things I've heard a lot about, especially is quarterback play yep. um, from Fairview. So if you could kind of give us a breakdown, what are the main things that the fans are going to have to look at tonight from Fairview? Yeah, Fair, Fairview's a great team. Uh, you know, just a well-coached, uh, just highly skilled team that, you know, Fairview's just, they've always been a, a good quality program for sure in these last several years. You know, Coach Bernard has really just, I mean, just crushed it. He, mm-hmm. he just does such a great job. He's a great guy um, and really does a good job with his kids and have them prepared and stuff like that and, and just super well coached. His son uh, actually is the quarterback mm-hmm. and uh, he's a four year starter. Uh, just uh, a couple of games back, went over 10,000 yards passing for his wow. career, which is only like, I think he's the seventh quarterback in state history to do that. Wow. He's an unbelievably talented uh, player, and uh, you know I happen to know a few people up at up at Fairview. Coach Antoine was one of our baseball coaches when I was growing up, and uh, he's the principal there. And his wife um, Alyssa is uh, the student council and all kinds of things. Just super great, great family up there, and they've told me just nothing but great things about the Fairview kids, mm-hmm. um, including you know the quarterback as far as you know just good good kids so it's they're a really high class program and they do things right and so they're you know they're one of the you know one of those teams that you just absolutely respect for how they yeah. do things but as far as, as far as quarterback play yeah um Jax Bernard is his name number 13 kid can throw it anywhere he wants to and I mean there's going to be times tonight that <clears throat> we're might be in great coverage and he still can find a way to get the ball where he wants it to go and uh, those receivers do a good job of making plays and getting open and, and, and staying open for him. He runs well, so if you do cover it well, he can break you down and run. I mean, he's just – he's a great athlete. He's a, he's a winner. I mean, I think the kid's maybe lost two or three games, if that, his entire high school career. So, um, 
you know, just a great team. It's going to be a great challenge for our kids. Um, and we're, you know, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. And so, you know, I, my question would be, mm -hmm. as someone who's never been a football coach, when you walk into a team and they were state champs last year, correct? Last two years. Yeah, yeah. last two years. Mm -hmm. what, how, is the approach at practice or as far as game plan, is that any different when you know you're going into a week where you're playing a two-time defending state champ? Or is it kind of business as usual? Any, any different right. wrinkles this week as far as approaching this team? You know, what I've learned just in the years of kind of trying to prepare and different things, and, and, and you know, you're always looking at, well, how should we, how should we do this, how should we do this? You know, I think really what works best, and it definitely works best for us, is we've got to, we've got to prepare for the opponent, but we've got to focus on us. And we got to, we got to do the things to get better at our own technique, you know? So uh, if we want to run, you know, this certain path, if we want to run power, well, we need to work on the fundamentals of running power so that we can run it against anybody, yeah. you know? And, and if we can do that, um, you know, then that, that's where you, you know, can at least go into a game and feel like, Hey, we've got a solid plan mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, but, um, so I don't think, I don't think it's a good idea to really just try to change everything you're doing because yeah. then in the kids' minds, uh, in the kids' minds, they start knowing, well, hey, this is weird. We don't ever do this. Why are we all of a sudden doing this? You know, and, and so for us, it, it's been big to just, let's just stay consistent. Let's mm -hmm. focus on us. Let's practice what we do and what we need to do against, you know, what they're going to try to do defensively and yeah. things like that. So obviously you prepare for them specifically in game planning, but we don't we don't try to change, you know, how we practice mm -hmm. or, um, you know, try to, I don't know, I think that creates a, an un... A, a, a apprehension in their mind yeah. and we want our kids to just we just want them to go play go mm -hmm. play hard and if we go out there and we go and hey we give ourselves a chance to win great if we go up there and a team beats us because they're better than us you know hey as long as our kids are playing hard that's yeah. what matters yeah. but um you know our kids have had a, a really good week of practice and they're good. really excited yeah. um, excited about the challenge and they know like hey it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough challenge but but they are really excited and they're and they're confident in the week that they've had. So, you know, now it's now it's kind of the fun time. Now, yeah. now it's time to, hey, let's just go see where we're at and uh, see what it looks like against a great program. Absolutely, and I think the fans are excited to see that yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so one kind of final question here. Mm -hmm. We haven't really talked a lot about this in the pregame show. Yeah. Um, and for some of the fans, that you know, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty now, the yeah. final weeks of the season. It's when you start really looking at those district standings and yep. thinking about how things are going to play out. Could you kind of break it down for us? It's like, where do we stand kind of district standing-wise? Yes. And what is the potential opportunity in these last three weeks of the season? Absolutely. It's a fun time of year. Yeah. Man, this is so exciting. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things when I got here, um, you know, we there had been some struggles as far as the record and stuff like that. And one of the things I, I told the boys in that first year was that if, if we do things right, games in October and November are going to matter, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that's what you really want to play for is those October, November games where it's like, yeah. okay, this gets fun, you know? Uh, so right now uh, where it sits, the top four teams from each district go to the playoffs. Okay. It's an 18 district top four. We'll get to go. We match up. We're district a one. We would match up with a two. Um, that includes teams like uh, Minko, Winnie Wood, yeah. um, Walter, some teams like that, CHA, so some familiar names there. Yeah. Um, played, played most of them. Yeah, played several of them, right? So, um, you know, really the key is once you get to your district games, which is, you know, you play, uh, essentially play seven district games, um, is, you know, from there they, it goes by record, mm -hmm. right? And then it can get into tiebreakers and things like that. Um, usually the, the key number is to try to get four district wins. Okay. Once you get four district wins, usually you're in the playoffs somewhere, but you may or may not be. It just depends on tiebreakers. So... Right now we're sitting at three district wins. Okay. We are in a four-way tie for second. Wow. Yeah. So first place right now is Hooker. Mm -hmm. um, and they basically they wrapped up the district last week, unless something just crazy happens over the last three weeks. Um, so, you know, Hooker essentially wrapped up the district in a lot of ways, but still open. Um, but it's a, a four-way tie between us, Cashin, Fairview, Sayre. Mm -hmm. Well... And these next three weeks, we play Fairview, Cash, and Sayre. Yeah. And all of us play each other. Yeah. So it'll all get sort sorted out. out. Yeah. Um, but what can a lot of things can happen. Right now, anything's open for us from second place and hosting a playoff game. But we would need to win all three games that we have. Um, you know, if you win two games, you probably end up in, like, third. 
which third means a road game, um, most likely down south to a Walters or a Winniewood, yeah. uh, possibly a Minko. Um, if we win one, um, we should end up in fourth place, which would probably put us at CHA. Okay. Um, if, and then, and again, now if we win one, but then there's some tiebreakers, we could end all the way up in fifth and out of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot that can play yeah. out. Wow. If you end up in a like a two way tie, it goes to head to head. Mm -hmm. So if we beat a team, and then another team beats us, and we end up in a tie with that team we beat, well, we would go. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, flip it around. Yeah. If that if a team beat us and we beat another team. Then they would go. Maybe we wouldn't. Yes. If you end in a three-way tie, it goes to district points. So every game, you get you can gain or lose points. It depends on how much you win or lose by mm -hmm. up to fifteen. So even in a game that you lose, it's key. You want to keep that l number as low as you can, especially under fifteen. So if you can keep it to seven or ten or six or yeah. one, it's obviously better than losing by fifteen points. So and that's why it's so big. Like in our our three wins we've been able to win by over 15 so we've gotten at all those district points we lost 15 with hooker so we're at a plus 30 in our district points okay yeah. right so eventually that could be a factor mm -hmm. we'll just have to see so it's literally everything's in our hands in front of us but you know it, it's it's a tough three three week schedule we just got to take it one at a time and see like what happens and the and the crazy thing is if you, if you win a game you got to Shake it off and move on to yeah, Monday yeah. and get ready for the next team. If you lose a game, you got to shake it yeah, off and move yeah. it on to Monday yeah, because yeah. we still got two. You get about so. twelve hours to celebrate, huh? Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's it's a fun time of year, and this is where practice gets a little more intense, and the mm -hmm. kids are a little more excited. And and uh, you know, like I said, we just we just hope over the next three weeks the kids go out and enjoy the moment. Yeah. And I mean, as much as anything, yes, we want to make the playoffs. We want to win these games. All those things. That's our number one goal. But it's also important to me that the kids, especially our seniors, enjoy these moments because this is what it, this is what we're building for is to to have these games matter and mm -hmm. it not be uh, well who cares just a game. They know yeah. it's a big game. And, yeah, you know, it's gonna be a perfect night and yeah, we're gonna great weather. Cool yeah, off great weather. Today. We're, we're gonna have a great night. It's I'll be, be annoying fun. the fans with some weather reports. That's okay. The game. It, fans cool off. Military appreciation night. Kitty yes. cheer tonight. It's yes. gonna be a great night to be to be out there. It will be. We'll go on. Coach Potter. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Man. Um, looking forward to a chance to get a you know great game tonight. Of course, yep. again for the fans. Cat uh, after this cash in the following week, and then Sayer at home. Yep. So yeah, like you said, I can remember a time been here nine years. Yeah. I can remember some days, some years where we were at the end of the season. Um, and a lot of this before you even got here is so yeah. the end of the season. And we were not talking about district standings and playoffs. Yeah. So it's just a testament to how a job you guys – how good of a job you guys have done and how far the program's come and the kind of kids we've got in the building right, right now. Good, so Good kids. Really good kids. So, so. excited about it. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how it plays out tonight. Uh, until next time, this is Coach Potter. I'm Coach Allen. Good Alright, I want to welcome you guys here. Getting ready to start this game at home against Fairview, the two-time defending state champs. They'll receive the ball to start this game, so you get a look at your comments. Defense first here as they try to bring him down. Finally down at the 29-yard line. They're going to mark it up to the 31. And that's how we're going to get this game started here this evening. So again, getting your first look at your comments. Defense, last week, of course, a great showing over fall break on the road, that Thursday night game at Merritt. Because, again, they were very physical, very strong up front. You know, you guys guys like, of course, Kyle Harrell, Bo Brookshire. Big names along that front there. Tegan White, I see down there. So, four-man dropping three linebackers. Almost like a cover two look here. Just going to hit him real quick. Turn, shows off the athleticism. It's a foot race, and he'll slide down. So, bang, bang, one big play there. Call it a chunk inside the 50 already down at the 44-yard line. So, just a little kind of a short hitch. And you get to see this athleticism already from Fairview. That's one thing Coach Potter talked about. They've got really good athleticism. You know, quick quarterback with a good arm. Something like 10,000 yards career passing. Uh, Four-year starter. Just, uh, you know, again, this is going to be a prolific passing game. Maybe one of the best they've seen is they hit a man in the flats and finally knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. It's going to be close to enough for the first. So 
two plays here, bang, bang, a hitch, and then a kind of a quick little out to the flats. And they're going to run up-tempo here, too, wasting no time. And so put the man out on the wing here, one back set, shotgun, two by one, two receivers to the left side. Set here is 20 seconds on the play clock here, wasting no time getting this one off. Looks over to the right side. It's going to let it fly. Has a man wide open there on a fade, but incomplete. A little too much on that ball. Defended there by Gomez. So, can take a breather here for just a second. It's again, they come out the gate. Three plays, three passing attempts, and that time for the comments, you can breathe a sigh of relief there. You got them to get an incomplete pass here as they'll move to the pistol formation. Wasting no time getting this ball out here, too, trying to stop that Comet front, that aggressive front seven. This time going to the ground as there's a keeper play. They tried to fake him. Comet's not falling for that. Kyle Hill says, down you go. And almost like a little kind of option play there, and they tried to fake it, and quarterback kept it, but Kyle Harrell, great job there, good discipline, didn't fall for it. A nice open field tackle, was able to wrap down a very athletic quarterback and bring him down, so hey, got a third down and long here, third down and five. Set, lets it fly, has a man open in space, just kind of a little quick hitch, and he's going to have enough for the first. Is didn't really have anybody shaded over the top there. There's number 12 there with the reception. And uh, so kind of a setup, easy, quick, dink and dunk for the QB. And that's what this up-tempo does. It makes the defense have to react fast. And, you know, the offense knows where they need to go with the ball. You got your first drive, of course, scripted. So it was an easy kind of bang-bang play for them. As they're going to look to the left side here, going to the air again. Has a man open in the flats, but drops that ball as it kind of goes right through his hands, that pass intended for number 33. And it feels like I'm having to talk very quick here. This is maybe one of the fastest offense, offenses that we've seen this season so far as they'll go to the pistol look here, wasting no time. Man in motion. They'll set him along the line. Uh, now they'll make a quick adjustment there. He'll have that wing on the left side. Hands it off. Nice wrap up there on the weak side. So they try to attack that A gap, kind of between that A gap and B gap. And just a really good play up front. We told you guys, that's where, you know, again, I see Tegan White over there. Uh, see, uh, looks like Bo Brookshire over there. They got some guys. A lot of size, tenacity up front. It's tough to run right up the middle on this Comet front. And they're going to try it again. Is this time really nowhere going. Tripped up is not going to have enough. Tell you what, these two plays right here kind of shows you what kind of night we're going to have is, you know, again, passing the ball extremely well, but trying to punch the ball up the middle against this Comet front. <laughs> might be a tough venture tonight for Fairview as it's now a fourth down and long. We'll call it fourth down and nine. Little shotgun set here, two by one. One back with him to block. Looks to pass. Relatively clean pocket, but collapses quickly, dragging him down. Nice job there on the sack. So I think that's Derek Pratt. And it is Derek Pratt, the big man, number 67. Bringing him down there is initially a clean pocket, but, you know, again, you're not going to have a whole lot of time to pass against this front. This front seven of the Comets is very good. It's probably, again, them as far as up front. That's where the Comets have the most skills, where they have the most ability to dominate in this game, and that's exactly what they did. They kind of showed out that time, had an initial pocket, but, again, was not able to contain for long and finally had a man break through, and it's the big man himself, Derek Pratt. And that's a turnover on downs. What a great way to get this game started for the Comets. And now we're going to get a first look at this offense. Led in the direction of Graydon Davini at QB. He's going to go with the power to the right, to the left, or excuse me, to the right side. No, to the left side. My goodness. That little C-gap run there. They love that uh, QB lead up the C-gap. But uh, well defended there as the edge kind of quickly collapsed on that running play. Good containment there. So it's a gain of two. And, again, for the Comets, if they're going to be having any success tonight, which, again, they showed you right there how important that run defense is. But, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, they're going to have to be able to establish the run. You know, that's the most important thing for this front is can they get push, push up front? Can they open up blocks? Can they get yards on the ground? And that's exactly where they're going to have success. As you see Deuce back there with Graydon, this is where if they're going to have success, they've got to be able to run the ball. Is that time just a little halfback dive. Solid gain there. We'll call it four on the play and it's third down and manageable here as we'll call it third down and four. And I tell you what, right there, very impressive. That's a good run right there because that puts you in third and manageable. Coach Phillips loses this a lot. He calls it third down and comet. Because uh you know again it's one of those where you don't have to get it all in one chunk. Of course you don't have the field position advantage right now, so can't 
definitively say it would be uh, four down territory here, but you get down to fourth and two, fourth and one against a team this good, and you're certainly going to be thinking about it because you want to win the time of possession and keep ball control. So they'll go with the QB lead again, just straight up the gut, though. Well defended by Fairview, and they'll stand him up. So here we go, fourth down, and boy, it's a long one. If it's one, you might call it fourth down and two. Either way, I'm sure it's going to have everybody in this building thinking, what do we do here, right? Do you be aggressive? Do you go for it? You got to turn it over on downs. Got to stop. Offense is looking like they want the ball, and I think the coaching staff is going to follow right along with them. Keep this offense out on the field. I don't see the punt team or anything coming out here, and I like this call. Even if they don't get it here, I like this. Um, as they'll make a couple substitutions here, bringing in, I see number 77. They're bringing in, that dude almost looks like a kind of a nose guard. A lot of size up front here. They know the comments are going to go with the run game here. Hands it off, goes straight up to gut. This one's going to be close, and they stand him up. And that size there on the strong side of the play, as you saw him bring in number big 77 there at that guard, and they were ready. They knew where that ball was coming. Of course, again, you knew they were going to run the ball. Uh, that doesn't mean it's a bad decision to run the ball there. That's what the Comets do best. They needed a yard and a half. Coach Potter and his coaching staff put faith in uh, the boys to try to get there and just came up a little bit short. So two drives, two turnover on downs. And uh, what a fun start to this game here. It's been a very good game so far. A little trips left, shotgun set. She's going to hand the ball to the left side. But comments say, no, sir, you are not going to run on us tonight. And that's a minimal game there. We'll call it one. And so, again, they've run the ball about four times here and really have just had no success running that ball. I know they're trying to establish that. Again, you saw the trips left there in the last play. Trying to What they're trying to do is get that box unloaded, you know, make it to where they can't put seven or eight in the box, make them spread it out, try to create some running lanes. And, you know, we're just so good up front uh, between our linebackers. And, ooh, they send one on a blitz there. Good pickup. Deep pass. Wide open. Can he catch up to it? And just drops it. Woo! Mercy sakes. On the go route there intended for number four. Wow. Comets catch another break there. That's a deep go pattern. And just a matter of could he catch up to the ball. That might have went right through the fingertips. And Comets can take another uh, deep breath there as they uh, just let a touchdown get by. So big miss there by Fairview. Which again, going trips left again, wasting no time at all. Snap. He's got pressure. Has to evade. Spins out of a surging deuce. Gets that ball right there, kind of in the hook curl zone on a nice little, uh, we'll call it a curl route there. and It's a good first down. When they get it on the yards, I'll tell you what, they're going for chunk plays. You know, they're not, you know, they've hit the flats a couple of times, but they're not trying to get three yards, four yards uh, per completion. They're trying to get 10, 15, or go for the house. So, you know, again, they're, they're trying to hit home runs in this passing game, and they're, again, quickly wasting no time here. Trips right. Looks to the right side. Let's it fly. Oh, had a man wide open there. Gomez bringing the wood there. See him make him remember that. Hits him right at the five-yard line. Pass incomplete. This QB put a little bit too much sauce on that one. Just a bit wide. Would have been a tough one to catch. I tell you what, even if he had cut it, Gomez was going to make him feel that one as he brought the heat. And so now, second down and ten. Same formation. Quick out here on the left side. It's got blocks. Dances around, makes another man miss. Charging into the end zone. Touchdown, Fairview. As Jackets strike first. 6-0 there on the surging passing attack. And he knew it was going to be a matter of when and not if as good as this passing attack has been. So the answer is going to be, as we set up for the extra point attempt, can the Comets answer? We'll find out here in just a moment. As uh, they'll set up for the extra kick. For the extra point attempt. And Comets ready to bring the heat here. Snap. Kick is up. And it's going to sail through the uprights. Extra point good. So Fairview strikes first up 7-0. We'll take a quick break and be right back here in just a moment right here on HintonComets.tv. Career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. Tired of complicated Wi-Fi management? Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi makes it easy. With Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi, you can set your Wi-Fi password, 
view all your connected devices, and even run speed tests all from your phone. Need to set up parental controls? No problem. Simple, smart, secure. Stay connected and in control with GoPioneer Smart Wi-Fi. Visit GoPioneer.com to learn more. All right, I want to welcome you back here on Hinton Commissar TV. Quick break, fast-moving game for those just tuning in. 6-11 here in the first quarter as uh, Comets initially get a turn on downs, get a defensive stand. Fairview has no luck running the ball, and the Comets go for it on offense on a fourth and short. Fairview makes a stand of their own and then strikes first here on offense on a little quick out to the weak side, the left side, and uh, kind of in the flats, and that's how they make it happen here is it's 7-zip, and they'll have to fix this ball as it blows over. We've got a little bit of wind. It's kind of died down some, but been blowing pretty strong the last couple of days. As, again, uh, we had a little scare east of town yesterday. It's real dry. Had a little bit of a fire threat. As I'm, One thing that's nice about this weather starting to cool down is that will kind of mitigate that fire threat a little bit is it's very dry and we need rain here as Gomez taking it here as they'll bring him down call that the 18 yard line as fans are not exactly thrilled with that contact and kind of drive to the ground but we'll play on so if you're the comments here this is an opportunity for them to answer as you've had the ball once it's their second drive did have some good things happen on that first drive they had a couple of uh, good running plays that put them in a fourth and short what Coach Phillips calls that fourth down in Comet. So, hey, you did go out there. You did prove that you can move this ball on the ground against Fairview. So now you got to do it consistently. got to be able to move the chains, get some first downs. <clears throat> Excuse me, <laughs> dry throat. Get some confidence built up here. Try to stretch out a long drive. you got 5.43 on the clock. Can you get a long drive, you know, here in the first quarter? Try to eat up some clock as they go straight up the gut. Do strip. That's a great way to get it started. We'll call that nine. Maybe enough for the first. It's going to be real close. Call it second down in inches. As the side, Joe says, maybe a half a foot, if that. As they just kind of go with a dive play and a full head of steam. Great job there by Deuce. To just take it straight up the gut. And that's how you do it right there. So they may take an official timeout to measure here. We will see. As again, you're going to see a real change of pace here, right? you got a team that wastes no time lining up, and the comments that will probably snapping this inside the 10 each time is, wow, need to be moving forward and kind of hesitating there, and they'll drive him to the ground, number 11, bringing down Graydon to Vinny. As just trying to shift a little bit, find a lane, and one of the dangers here is a Fairview front is good enough defensively that you got to get uphill. You know, Deuce kind of hit, hit, a, hit a hole real fast and just kind of got downhill as quick as he could. But that time, you know, the little biting, the shifting, the maneuvering, going to be tough to do against this Fairview front as uh, they're just going to have to find a hole and hit it hard. Of course, might not have been one there on that play. So either way, as you kind of hear, if you guys can see this on the camera, I don't know if you can on that far side there, that play clock. They're going to be snapping this inside of 10. It's a shotgun set. A flag here early is brought down. So it's a loss on third down, but a flag. It was thrown before the snap, so we'll get the call. Maybe a false start penalty here. As it was something before the snap. Don't didn't see any movement. Oh, never mind. It's on the defense. Okay. So they'll take that there. It's five yard penalty on Fairview. The Yellow Jackets. So that'll move the chains there. That's a costly penalty. So that gives the Comets a new set of downs, and they will absolutely take that. As they'll reset this ball, should have it on about the the 31 yard line. And again, starts that play clock and starts that game clock. So four minutes here in the first, and I know we do a lot of clock watching here, but you know, again, that's just part of the Comets' uh, recipe for success. They have to, you know, they have to that win that time of possession. There, going to the pass, open in the flats. Is whoa! He got a little bit too greedy there. Nice job by Gomez, and then throws a elbow out of bounds. Great job right there. Is again just tried to defensively tried to jump that route. Just kind of a little quick, a uh, little curl, a little out there, and uh, whew, that's the risk you take right there. Is if you can successfully jump that route, you got a chance for a turnover. But if you, you know, you don't get there in time, you get an athletic Gomez with the ball in space, and so good catch right there, and uh, nice yards after the catch. 
they'll have this ball at about the 45 yard line so finding a little bit of success here and tell you what if you can get some success in the air I know they tried it a lot last week they called several plays had some hits had some misses uh, I think him and you know Graydon and Colton were a little bit off with each other last week and I tell you what you can get some success in this passing game and you'll have a shot to hang uh, with Fairview tonight as they go up the right side call it a gain of two make a second down and eight so one of the fun things to watch here in this first half so far has been this running game. You know, it's been the Comet front versus the Fairview front. And, again, we've talked about it so many times. It's just how, uh, you know, they've got that elder leadership up front, those upperclassmen. they got a lot of size. You know, they got brute size, brute strength, and uh, they've been used to dominating opponents. When they win, it's because they're dominating up front. But we're seeing a team up front, this Fairview defensive front, Hey, they're ready to play too. They brought a, you know, they've brought some size and some strength with them. So this has been a good battle so far. As this time bringing the rush, Green's going to need to hold on to it. Is they try to strip him, but he'll have enough strength. Good job there holding on to it. But a big loss there in the pass rush of the Yellow Jackets shines strong as it's a third down and long, and we'll call it third down and twelve. So that time, give the check to the defense. As again, this battle up in the trenches, this is a lot of fun. You know, I hate saying this, this is a good, uh, it's a good football game. It's kind of fun watching this. This is two good teams. As we said, you know, this, this, this could end up being a battle for potentially second place in this district. You know, I mean, Hooker right now is just kind of in a spot where, you know, they're about one win away from crowning themselves district champs. But hey, from that point on, on down the list, it is wide open. You know, we've got uh, Cashin. And this one is they're showing a timeout here. Com is going to take their first. So I'll tell you what, we'll continue to continue this discussion after the break. Don't go anywhere right here on HintComets.tv. school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success. So visit us today at theamgteam.com. All right, coming out of the timeout here, third down and long. Shotgun set, two receivers to the left, rolls out, lets it fly. Is that one just a little bit too much sauce there? Not sure if there was some miscommunication there on the play. Either way, uh, that's an incomplete pass, so it'll be a fourth down. And I imagine this time they'll bring out the punt team. Smart thing to do is, again, I like their play calling so far. You know, I like the decision to go for it. Uh, on fourth down the first time around, and, you know, this time fourth and long, smart decision, especially where this ball is at in your field position. Just go ahead and punt this and, hey, let your defense get out there and try to get a stop. You know, you did it the first time. You got to turn over on down, see if they can do it again. As this time has to get the ball out pretty quick. Not the best punt, but, ooh, it does take a Comet bounce and roll, and we'll take that as they'll down that at about the 25-yard line. So, Fairview's going to have to go three-quarters of the distance of the field here as they lead seven zip. We'll stay live right here on HintonComets.tv. So, again, for all the fans that missed the pregame show, we were talking a little bit about district standings and how things are playing out. And as we said, right now, Man, they're not wasting no time here right now. <laughs> we may have to talk about this another time. It's, wow, this offense wastes no time. So uh, we'll have to hit that segment a different time. Let's get after it here. Shotgun set. Two receivers out to the left side. It's a two-by-one receiver in motion here. Almost like a little uh, jet sweep. And they'll bring him down at the 30-yard line. So a gain of five on first down. So just a little jet sweep there. Uh, it's a pretty, again, pretty basic play, pretty basic concept. like to see that motion kind of reveals whether you're running uh, man coverage or zone. Still got to, again, you still got to contain the edge. You got to have good blocks. Uh, you know, you got to have good tackle play, good tackle guard uh, play right there. And so that's, a, that's probably the best running play they've had so far here is got five on that one. Shows you how good the comments have been in the run game so far defensively. As that time, nifty pass there hits a man 
at the 43-yard line and kind of open space. And I tell you what, he just kind of finds a hole. It's a good route. You know, one nice thing about uh, we call talk about with good route running is can you find a hole in that defense, right? Sometimes you just kind of find a hole, find a pocket, and you sit in it. you got to have a quarterback that can get you the ball. And, again, we talk about this quarterback having 10,000 yards pass, and he's just uh, going to be able to find that here. Is shotgun set to the left side. Let's it zip as a play to the flats. It makes a man miss. And here we go off to the races. Brought down out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. And that's good job right there from the offense. But most importantly, it's those yards after the catch. You know, you shake a man off, you turn a play, it's going to be 10, 15 yards into a 25-yard play. And that's one thing the Comets are going to have to mitigate here defensively. They're going to have success. Is they're going to have to eliminate some of these yards after the catch. And wasting no time here. Shotgun set. Going bang, bang to the house. Number four. Here we go. Jumps up four. Well defended there by Gomez. No flag. And I tell you what, that's a great job there by Gomez. Just showing off that athleticism. He knows in that position there, it's kind of a little go fade. You're going to try to get that in the back uh, back corner of the end zone. You got to go up, right? You got to go up. Got to play a little jump ball. Got to you know, got to play defense, right? Got to kind of poke that ball out. And he just did a good job. He leaped a little bit higher than the receiver did. Made it a tough uh, ball for him to try to catch. It's a pretty good ball from the quarterback. and uh, But just better defense there from Gomez. And that'll kind of reset things for a moment at second down and 10. As again, they just, you know, again, they can hit you in so many different ways. That screen pass or the touchdown wall ago. They have that, you know, the go routes, the end zone fades. There's just so many different ways this offense can hit you. That's a nice little stutter step and cut back inside on a halfback dive there. And that'll be a gain of five. Is again, they're just trying to keep the defense honest, right? Try to keep you from dropping everybody back in coverage uh, with the eventual, or with the eventual, excuse me, uh, with the occasional run play there. Is that one gets six yards. And if you're the comments, you know, you've done a really good job of uh, kind of eliminating that run offense. But if they get that going, it's going to be a really long night. There's another screen pass. Stiff arms a man. They try to bring him down. Finally brought down at the 25-yard line. That's going to be enough for the first. And that right there is, that's brutal. That's tough. Probably would have been four-down territory anyways, but that's tough right there. It's kind of a backbreaker, you know. You get an incomplete pass there, or get a stop, get it to fourth down. Maybe you got to kind of have an opportunity to stack the stack the line of scrimmage, but instead it's going to be a shotgun set, new set of downs, trips left. Looked like a little early jump there from the outside receiver. No flag, of course. Dancing around, pocket starts to collapse, and there's that Comet front as you're not going to get all day to pass against these boys. And they're jacked up there. I see Jacob Bonniewell on the tackle, but you might as well say three Comets in there on the tackles. Saw Rafael Gomez in there as well. Look like Derek Pratt, but about three or four of them. I'm sure Kyle in there somewhere too. So uh, initially a clean pocket, but I tell you what, you gotta you gotta count down about three seconds when you you know call a pass and play against this front. You got about three seconds when you step back into your drop. If you don't get that ball out soon, within about three seconds, this front's gonna get to you. So that'll be the end of the first. Great game so far. Fairview leading seven zip. We'll take a quick break. Be right back for the start of the second quarter right here on HintComments.tv. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Two words, cash back. Two more words, you're welcome. Remember that jar in your dresser where you would throw your loose change at the end of the day? Then occasionally, you take the jar to the bank to have it counted and enjoy a bit of a surprise to find there is more in there than you thought. That's Square One Banking, the account with a virtual money jar, and it's offered exclusively. All right, I want to welcome you back here. Start of the second quarter. 7-0, Fairview lead. They've got the ball. 
Second down and long. Low snap. Has to, oh, damn, I thought there a little uh, screen pass initially. Tell you what, bubbles the ball. Little man falls on it. 15-yard line, almost disaster there for Fairview. And again, little man, not a, not an insult there, right? It's just that euphemism. Of, if your little guy picks it up, big man falls on it there. Went with the went with the opposite there. Decided to fall on it, and that's what you got to do right there. You don't want to be scooping the – try to scoop the ball up there with the big man coming in right at you. So, uh, smart move there and almost a disaster. But uh, it'll end up being a gain of five for fair use. A third down and ten. And just as quick as I can even get this out. It's a trips right. Pressure here on the backside. Has to let it fly. And another drop. As I tell you what, he threw that. He's getting ready to take an absolute lick off the edge. Good ball. And again, just had a couple of opportunities here where, you know, again, a receiver open in space, a good throw, and just not able to come down with the, you know, come down with the ball. It's, you see that at a lot of different levels, but, you know, especially in Class A, <laughs> get a little reminder that sometimes this is Class A football, and, you know, these are high school kids, and that those are that's part of the game. So that's a big moment missed right there, and Fairview has had a couple of those. So, I think they're going to go for it here. Shotgun set. We'll go. We'll call it a two by one. Got one back there with him. Snap. Looks to the left side. Gets to the outside. Can't get away from him. Finally brought down. As I tell you what, that was pretty good pressure for Crease Douglas right there. As Crease wasn't going to let him go, was dragging him down to the ground. And it'll be fourth down in about four. And that was good pursuit there. Just nice job by Crease to not let him get away. We talk about the athleticism of this quarterback, the ability to get outside the pocket. And so, oh, there, I had the wrong. Okay, I guess I had the wrong stick. That was fourth down, so it'll be turnover on down. So, excuse me, I forgot for a moment it was fourth down. So, hey, turnover on down. Good job there by Crease. This game's moving so fast, it's hard to even really spend much time thinking about it. As I can tell you for... Uh, Absolute certainty, this is the quickest offense the Comets have faced uh, this season. And uh, I can't remember one last season or the season before that that's been this quick. So another turnover on downs. Two stands so far in the first half from your Comets defense. They're going to go QB power to the left side there on the first down. And gains about three. So we'll call it second down and six. As again, you got to give Fairview a little bit of credit, too. They've done a pretty good job in this run defense. You know, the Comets initially kind of gashed them a couple times here and there. Had a good halfback dive from Deuce on the previous drive for a gain of nine. And uh, But I tell you what, they've been able to stand. You know, you look at that front right there, I see a couple of uh, almost nose guard size players. They've got some size where they can kind of match with the Comets. And, you know, they've done a good job of containing, kind of collapsing the edge where, you know, that little C-gap lead that they like to run. Hasn't really quite been there tonight like they've liked to have it, but I'm sure that's not going to keep, you know, this coaching staff from going for it and uh, just right there, nowhere to go. You can see him kind of dancing around there. Is not sure who has the ball. Looks like that might have been Cotter. It was. That ball there carried from Peyton Cotter. And you've seen that. You've seen him and Deuce. They both, they've all had plays like that where they're just kind of weave, you know, a little bit behind the line of scrimmage and find a gap and just hasn't been there, you know. Got to give a testament there. They're, uh, putting some defenders down in the box. Front seven's playing really well, and those running lanes just haven't been there. And so now they're in a third down and four situation. But I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised here. Four down or four yards on third down. Would not be surprised to see the Comets continue to keep this ball on the ground. They have a lot of confidence in what they do. One receiver out on each end. Gets it there. Makes the man miss. All right there. Nice completion there. Just on a little quick curl route. And that's a great job right there. It looks like on the far side that's Colton Helms with the reception. And you knew right there, again, just kind of playing a little bit of off coverage, and that's kind of the name of the game. You're going to let him catch that ball behind the sticks, but then as the defender, you've got to make that open field tackle. And Colton just uh, shows some strength right there and it kind of uh, shakes off the defender, and that's going to reward the Comets with a new set of downs. So it's a seven-zip game here, 929 in the second quarter. Been a very well-contested game so far here as Comets. Fighting hard, just a one-score game. Gomez in motion. They'll hit him on the around. As uh, man, they do a great job getting to the outside there. Really nowhere to go with the ball, and that's a big loss. We'll call it second down and 18. And I'm telling you, they've tried. We call that you know either that C gap QB power or that QB lead. Uh, you know, again, right there, we've seen the end around things like that. Just trying to get this ball to the outside. As uh, up here with the superintendent. 
<laughs> having some fun. It's a great, getting a great game so far. We got a lot going at halftime too. The military appreciation tonight. A lot going on. It should be very, very fun. But um, as you can see, they've just had some trouble getting this ball to the outside. You know, they've done a great job of containing, making it, uh, making it difficult to get to this ball to the outside. And they've got good athleticism here, and we're going to get a timeout taken by the comments. So we'll stay live right here on HintComments.tv and uh, kind of fill you in on some things that are going on. So if you're out here, of course, at halftime, we've got the military appreciation. So Misty Hickman, our band director, she's going to be leading that. We'll be giving a tribute to our men and women who have served. Um, so that'll be a wonderful thing here at halftime. And, of course, we're going to have the kitty cheer out here as well, led in the direction of uh, Coach Van Huss and Coach Holman. Our uh, wonderful cheer coaches there, so they'll have all those little kids down there doing some uh, kitty cheer stuff. I saw them practicing this week in the multipurpose, and all I can say is it's a testament to how good our coaches are because they have to deal with about 100, uh, 100 little kids yelling and screaming outside after school and actually well behaved. But I tell you what, that 100 kids for kitty cheer, that's that's quite a job. And uh, I tell you what, Coach Van Hess, Coach Holman do a good job with that, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> and they got to do that twice. They do it during basketball season, and they do it during football season. So, it's either raining or somebody's pouring drink from the. You never know what's going to happen in these football games. So here we go, back at it, out of the timeout here. After the end around there, that ended up being big loss here. They're going to drop back, rolls to the right side, tries to get a pass here. Does that one look like maybe intended for do strip? Incomplete and probably a good decision there. Chunked that one out of bounds. Well defended by the Yellow Jackets. As uh, had that well defended man coverage there and just a good job of staying with their receiver and really nowhere to go there with the ball. So Comet's going to be a tough situation here, third down and long. And this is what you want to do. You know, this is kind of a situation where you got to be careful. You know, the one of the keys that Coach Potter talks about to having success. Getting yourself in a chance to win is time of possession, but it's also turnovers. They've won the turnover battle the last couple of weeks. You know, you don't want to throw a turnover here. You don't want to throw a pick. As that ball there, that's a good idea, right? That ball is, again, Colton there, not open, well defended by number four. Last thing you want to do is turn this ball over right at about midfield or even a little bit shorter of that. Just chunk it. Right, chunk it to where if he does pick it off, you're on the other side of the 50, um, you know, and it's not an opportunity there for a costly turnover. So as that's really what I was going to say. You don't want to get a strip sack here. Uh, you don't want to fumble the ball. You don't want to have a turnover to give them any momentum. So even though you didn't, you know, get a first down there, that's a that was a smart throw. Not open on that play. So just good decision there by Graydon. And uh, they're going to have to punt this one. But I tell you what, that's a tough punt right there. That's going out of bounds. No, it is not going out of bounds. That's going to take a little Comet roll there. We've got some Comet magic alive tonight. And they'll down that at the 50-yard line. I tell you that, that is such a uh, breadth of relief right there. That one's going to be potentially inside the 40. Said they'll get this one at the 49 on the other side. So... Uh, that's a big benefit here, and we'll stay live on HintonComments.tv because I tell you what, Fairview, not wasting any time. I feel like I'm having to talk 100 miles an hour tonight. And so here they go, getting another look at this offense. Shotgun set, two back formation, two receivers to the right, the right side. They'll hand it off, going up the middle, makes a man miss. Here we go to the outside. It's a foot race. Gomez will catch him, drag him out of bounds, and throw him down at the 25-yard line. So that's the biggest gain on the night on the ground for Fairview is all their chunk plays thus far have come through the air as uh, that time kind of won there from the back of the line of scrimmage, you know, had to shuffle a little bit, thought maybe they would stand him up and just made one man miss and off to the races. So here we go. Oh, man, that time. Oh, man, incomplete cat or incomplete, <laughs> excuse me, incomplete pass. And I don't know if he was hearing footsteps or what, but that's another drop from that outside receiver. I think that's number eight on the far side is, tell you what, either uh, just having a little bit of, having a tough night, or he's hearing footsteps and thinking Colton Helms was about to pop him on that one because I, it almost felt like he uh, was hearing footsteps or seeing someone in front. As we get a little movement on the outside here, I think we're going to have a, Oh, encroachment there. Yep, so, again, anytime you see a little movement there, it's either somebody is trying to get on the move there, you got them in the neutral zone, or somebody's false started. They've moved a little bit too early on the offensive side there. So, that time encroachment, so that's going to bump them up five yards, make it second down and five. 
Tell you what, the Comets have just had a little magic tonight. There's been, you know, two or three plays in this passing game where they've had some home run balls just dropped. That time a little toss play, cuts back inside, brought down at the 15-yard line, and it's going to be close to enough for the first on the toss play. A little crack toss. And I think, you know, again, the far side line judge is showing he's got enough for the first. And they will go ahead and move those. No, they will not move those chains. Yep, there they go. Now they will. So first down and 10. Rolling to the right side here. Uh, hitting him open in the flats. And brought down. Now, oh, camera's over there. Hey, that's good. A little free publicity right there. <laughs> As uh, just uh, speaking with some of our wonderful fans, we got some great fans here, a lot of support. If you see some uh, faces up on the camera, we got some of these kind of bobblehead type uh, <laughs> fan cardboard cutouts are pretty cool. And uh, so shotgun set, two back set here. So gets it out really quickly. It's a nice pass from the QB. Cuts back to the outside, and he'll be down just about a yard short of the end zone. And here we go. We're going to need a red zone stand here from your Comets. So this is where teams that, you know, teams that pass the ball that rely on this passing game, it's where it gets tough, you know. It's a shorter field. It's a little bit easier and more advantageous for the defense. You're going to have to run the ball here, right? You're going to have to show some muscle at some point in time. They have run the ball a couple of times this last drive with some success as they're going to call a timeout here. For the fans just tuning in, wondering what in the world's going on, where are we? We are 6-27 here in the second quarter. As uh, That's just their first charge timeout, so they'll have two timeouts left. Comments with one. And we'll go ahead and stay live here on HintComments.tv because they're not wasting any time tonight. As again, got some people. Tell you what, there's a lot, all kinds of stuff goes on in this press box tonight. Here's we got some some people dropping some liquid on us. <laughs> all right, <laughs> swear he's <laughs> swear he's dropping porn liquid. It's twice has hit my head. <laughs> All right, so coming out of the timeout here. Going to take this ball under center. Snap, hands it off to the right side. Dragging him forward, but he's not going to have enough for the TD there. Might have almost lost a yard as it looks like the uh, side judge here is backing him up a step. So this is going to be a long couple of yards now as it was about a yard, yard and a half. Now it's two. So, again, like I said, this is where things get tough. You know, it's second, just second down, but this is where if you don't have a lot of success in the running game, it's a short field. It's easier to defend the pass. You're going to have to muscle up here and find a way to get this on the ground game as the QB this time gets outside as, wow, muscles down, takes a big hit, but pumped up. As he just decided to take matters into his own hands, brings two defenders down with him and in the end zone for a touchdown. Again, not sure how uh, close to the design play that was. Either way, uh, he would not be denied. I'll tell you that. He absolutely was a man on a mission. As there we go. Got the six on the board here. So the extra point attempt here. Trying to go up two scores in what's been a really, really hard-fought game so far. Love the effort and the fight we've seen from the comments here. Is that one's through the uprights and good. So 14 zip. So uh, we'll take a quick break and be right back here in just a moment on Hinton Comments TV. By Legacy Bank.
side. Here we go. Ready to kick this off. Comets trailing by two scores. But I tell you what, the scoreboard doesn't really tell the story of the game. It's been a really good ball game so far. Comets have been biting and clawing and hanging in this one. So, you know, like we talked about, hey, you get the ball here, put some points on the board. You do get this ball after the first half. You get it to start the second half. So, I, I, to me, that's the mission right there. Is Here we go. Colton's got it. As uh, Got it and ran out of bounds there. As that's, you know, he's going to be frustrated right there. Um that's tough. I think that would have, you know, again, you let the ball roll out of bounds right there just by the looks of it. You let the ball roll out of bounds, you get that ball on the 35-yard line and ah, just took it right there and ran out, ran out of bounds with it. I think he tried to turn back towards the field and they caught him there. So this is really, really tough situation there. I know um, just a mistake. Those happen. I know the coaching staff's not going to be thrilled about it, but, hey, it's a mistake. It happens. He's done a lot of good things this season. So uh, now they're going to have to dig themselves out of a hole here as they got this one on the five-yard line. Not the field position, ideally, that they wanted to start this drive. But I tell you what, you got 5-12 on the clock, 95 yards to drive, and only a two-score game. You get the ball after halftime. So let's go to try to get some points on the board here and keep this, keep the comments in this game. So they'll go QB lead to the right side there, brought down. And it'll be a gain of two on the play. So second down and eight. And that's just been the story of the night. You know, there's so many things we can talk about, but really... Uh, what I see from the comments offensively is just trying to get this ball to the outside and not having a lot of success. You know, comments have just, uh, or Fairview's just done a really good job up front. They've done a good job of kind of containing the edge, not having those outside running lanes, and uh, that's where the comments like to go. They like to hit that C gap, and uh, they've had so much success doing that this season, and it's just not been there so far tonight. So they're really going to stack them up on the line of scrimmage. Got almost everybody there. Draws back to pass. Has a man open. Colton's open. And oh my goodness! Oh, man. Almost like a mix between a go and a post. Just kind of a go. And, oh, they caught the defense napping right there. Had everybody on the line of scrimmage and one man running downfield just through the fingertips of Colton Helms. Oh, man. I tell you what, that would have been, I think that would have been a tutty. And, uh, gosh, just so close right there. Is, tell you what, the comments have had a lot of things go right for them this evening. And there's just a couple of plays right there um, where the luck's kind of turned a little bit. Fairview got lucky right there, you know. That was a good draw, good design, good route from Colton. Just uh, didn't quite connect, and a good ball from Graydon, too. So here we go, third down and long, shotgun set. Gets this one out to Colton. Good catch. A little forward progress there, but not going to be enough. Is fourth down and five. And with this field position, they're almost certainly going to have to punt. And it's going to be really difficult here, too. You hate punting this deep. You know, again, it's a shorter field, shorter field for you. It's not short for the defense, but it's shorter for you. You can't quite get as deep as you'd like to punt this ball, and you got to—you know you've got to get this ball out quick. And even if you do punt the ball well, you know they got a chance to at least, you know, if it's a fair catch, it's going to be at midfield, but they got a really good chance to get this ball inside the 40. So this is going to have to be really, really good execution right here. Going to have to put a good leg on or a good leg into this ball. Gomez will absolutely nail this one. That's a great kick. He got it out of bounds. Didn't allow them to get hands on the ball. I think they're going to get this one at about the 30, we'll call it 37-yard line. So, tell you what, not bad there. Could have been, you know, that's a situation where there's just really not a whole lot you can do as far as field position. You know they're going to get it on their side of the field offensively, and you just want to avoid a disaster right there. So a fairly decent punt there from Gomez. Now the comments are going to have to lock down. You know, this is a two-score game. We talked about it there, you know, you want to have an opportunity there to try to get some points, maybe make it a one-score game, but now you want to try to keep it a game. You've got to get a defensive stand here. You don't want to go into halftime down three scores. Uh, you've got to have a stop here defensively. So shotgun set, a little quick out right there, is, catches it in the flats, and uh, just a bang-bang play from the offense, and that's going to be a gain of nine on the reception, maybe nine and a half. And I tell you what, that's just what Fairview does so well. They do a lot of things well, but they just get the ball out really quick. You know, this front is so good. If you give them three, four seconds, they're going to get to the quarterback, but they're mitigating that by getting this ball out as quick. As you see right there, two steps, bang, hit him in space, forward, enough for the first. Just hitting him really, really quick. And Comets are kind of playing off coverage a little bit. That's, uh, you know, again, you're just trying to keep the offense things in front of you, trying to keep the ball in front of you, and that's just kind of setting up some bang-bang plays. At some point in time, you might have to play press. You might have to kind of close the gap a little bit, and not. but but then you run the risk of getting beat over the top, too. So, um, nice job right there. Ball's out. 
They got a foul on it. Nobody has it yet. They may not have it. Oh, man. Fairview balls. There's another close call. As I tell you what, that magic starting to even out right there. That ball just kind of comes rolling out, and you thought the Comets might have a chance to get that ball back, but Fairview just keeps it in their grasp. But there, that's a huge, huge loss. Now you're sitting at second down in a mile. <laughs> I'll get you back. As here we go, second down in a mile. Shotgun said it's a two by two. As again, though, this is a prolific passing attack here, so not impossible to get this one. Drops back. Tries to find a man open. High point in that one is Graydon Vinny. And if he snatches that one, you got nobody in front of you and a lot of green left to run. So good job there trying to high point that one, get a get a turnover. And uh, oh, we got Kitty. We must have Kitty Cheer getting ready to rock and roll. We got the cheer squad up here. What, what? Getting ready to get it going. So military appreciation first, right? And then it's cheer, then it's kitty cheer. Okay, sweet, sweet. All right, here we go. Rolling back to pass to the left side. Has a clean pocket, lets it fly. He's out of bounds anyway, that's to reestablish. Ball sets all the way out, backside of the end zone. Incomplete, not a catchable ball. Comet survive, and that's a big stop right there. Uh, that little strip sack while we go. Very, very, very important. Uh, really put them in a great field position as far as the offense kind of had to go for some chunk plays. They were able to drop everybody back and, you know, good pressure there from the defensive front. And I tell you what, that's a big win right there. That is probably, um, aside from the defensive stand on the first series, that might this is probably the biggest stop of the half as uh, they've still got the offense on the field, though. So maybe one more play here. Yeah, got trips left here. So one more time, bringing the pressure quick, lets it fly. Going for number four, but that ball is short. Well defended again by Gomez. Colton Helms in there with him. It's incomplete. And turnover on down. So I think that is three on the half. Uh, is, that the, is that the third turnover on downs from this deep generated by this defense in the first half? I think it is. And I'm not talking to myself, America. I'm talking to people up here. It's a third turnover on downs. What a great first half from this Comets defense. I'm sure I'm going to get some text at some point. Who are you talking to? Did you make up a, statisti a statistician? No, didn't. I got peeps. So let's get into the look at this offense here. But the problem now is 2:04 on the clock here, and this is an offense that doesn't move down the field very quickly. You know they're run heavy when they have success, but now they got to figure out how to move down the field very quick here. As a little uh, QB lead here, and that's getting nowhere. Maybe a gain of. Tell you what, maybe a little bit more. We got two different, yeah. The backside judge is a, in a lot different spot there. It's actually it's a gain of four, so a modest gain there. Initially, didn't think they gained anything, but once they kind of realigned the uh, officials, it's a second down and six. So a gain of four does get out of bounds. Does manage to stop the clock. That's important, right? You want to go boundary to boundary with these. Good design there. Good, uh, good option to go to the outside. You only got one timeout to burn. That's another element here. You can only stop the clock once. So you need everything to the boundary here. And going up the middle, a flag there. Hard contact. So we'll get the penalty here. Is that stone by the backside judge here? And early indication here. That's holding on the offense right there. It's tough call. It's going to back them up. It's going to have to replay the second down. And don't think usually holding penalties. I know it just about every other level calls or pros holding penalties stops the clock. So we'll watch the white hat to see if he winds the clock. But I think usually um, that does stop the clock at least. Nope, does start the clock. Okay, high class A, a little bit class, high school, a little bit different. So that's unfortunate there because you lose the yards and uh, the clock continu continues to roll. Excuse me. So 15 seconds on the play clock. They're going to have to get this one in quick. Um, as they get ready to line up, getting to the line of scrimmage inside of 10. Second down in a mile. Hands it off. Just going straight up the guts. Carter with it. He'll gain about three on this one. So I think at this point, again, you, you know, uh, you got a minute 20 here on this clock. Wouldn't be too surprised as we're going to get a timeout here taken by Fairview. 
and might as well. Why not? They got two to burn. One left now. They're taking this one. I want to remind all the fans here, of course, at halftime, we've got a uh, kitty cheer coming up. We've got our military appreciation night where we honor all those who have served in all the different branches of our armed forces. So that'll be exciting. A little nerve-wracking for me. I get to hop on. Uh, I go from the headset to the microphone. Get to wear a lot of hats. It's fun. You know, it's one, one of the cool things about being here in Hinton is just getting to wear uh, a lot of different hats and kind of getting to do some different things. So then we'll follow that up with some kitty cheer. We'll get about 100 kids down on the football field and uh, have them show off a couple of cheers. They've been working hard on that all week. They've been right outside my room right after school. And uh, they've been having a blast. I, I feel like our cheer coaches do such a good job with that. They do it twice a year, too. They do it during football season, and then they'll turn around and do it in that loud, echoey dome. One of my favorite buildings, our dome. They'll do that with about 100 kids during basketball season. So uh, they do a great job, and they've been working hard on it all week. So we'll get to see that here at halftime. As I already see some of the parents starting to make that walk right here now. So they know what's coming up. As you can see that on the bottom side of your screen there, some of the parents taking their little ones already for the kitty cheer. But we got a minute 21 left in this half. Comet still got this football. So third down and 13. Shotgun set, two receivers to the left. And he'll just kind of keep this one, try to navigate his way up the left side, but going nowhere. And it'll be fourth down and about the same, fourth down and 13. And a timeout here taken by Fairview. Wow, I tell you what, so they, what this signifies to me, you taking these timeouts, is they're going to try a little, you won't call it maybe quite a two-minute offense, but uh, they're not done. They want this football back. They're going to try this probably quick passing attack, this hurry-up offense. They're going to try to run sort of like a two-minute type of drill, probably boundary to boundary. Um, they're going to try here. They're going to try to get this ball down the field and try, one, uh, try to score one more time. That's what I indicator I'm getting here from them burning their timeout, so... Comments will have to game plan. They'll have to scheme and be ready to rock and roll with this. Going to see the punt game come out here. The punt team come out here on fourth down, I'm assuming. Maybe. Yep, here we go. So we're going to have to put a leg into this one. This deuce back there, ready to kick. It's two back, ready to receive. Low snap. Kick. Woo! That one almost takes an arc and angle on right there out at the 40-yard line. Low kick. A lot of top spin. And they're going to have to travel the distance of about 60 yards here on the final drive. And like we said, they've been stopping this clock. They took these timeouts, used every single one they got. They run up tempo. They got a kind of a quick passing attack. I'm assuming, you know, they're probably going to work boundary to boundary, try to get things in the flats. Um... Wouldn't surprise me, of course, if they do uh, navigate this over the middle of the field. It'll have to be something big, right? A seam round or a go, something over the top. Might see one attempt at a chunk play here and there. They have had a couple of opportunities with that outside receiver. They just came up a little bit short, couldn't quite connect. So here they go. They're dropping back. A little pressure from Kyle. Oh, man, wide open foot race. This time, number four catches up to it, gets the fingertips on the ball, secures it, and walks into the end zone on just a straight go out. There's that bang bang play that we were talking about. They had that about two times previous in the first half and just couldn't quite connect and that time is just a matter of can the receiver catch up to that ball. That quarterback got an arm and a half and that time just into the fingertips and, and sealed and that right there is a dagger into the heart of the comments as that's a really really tough play to give up right here before halftime. You know we talked about you keep this a two score game you get the ball after halftime and uh now that uh, molehill just turned into a mountain. Is that's a three-score deficit here, rolling into halftime. So they'll definitely have their work cut out for them, but still a whole half of football left to play. Kick is up, and it is good. As they've got a kicker here in Class A football, we got one, but they got one too. So 21 zip. Take a quick break and be right back here in just a moment. Hit comments. Dot TV. We can also. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, 
preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, CareerTech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their All right, so here we go. Back out of here, a minute left here in the first half. This Comets just going to have to event, you know, tur prevent turning this ball over. Try to get some solid field position here. Running to the left side. Has a gap open here. Needs to make one man miss. Oh, just out of bounds right there. As that brings the Comet fans to their feet. Excited about that one. I'll tell you what, the Comets could have used that one right there. Nice bit of running there. As that's a big job right there on special teams. So I tell you what, you got about 55 seconds left here to play. Comets again, just one time out. Can only stop the clock one time. If I'm if I'm the Comets here, I'm taking a few chunks into the end zone here. See so you can get maybe a go route or a post. See if Graydon Davini can't let this thing fly. Down three scores here. You do get the ball after halftime. How big would it be if you could uh, connect on a big passing play and get in the end zone here right before halftime and come back out with this ball? So shotgun set. Colton in motion. Snap. Here we go. A little trick play. Going to draw back the pass. Has some pressure. Has to get this one out. Go, man. Into the hands. Inside the 10. And out of bounds. At the nine-yard line. And Comets reaching to the back of tricks. And hit the big bang with still 45 seconds left on the clock and one more timeout. And what a great job there. Good throw by Colton. A nice route, of course, from Gomez. And Comets have a chance here to put some points on the board. And that's just a great uh, great execution, but a great drop on the play, too. And, uh, man, that was really big. Shotgun set here. Two receivers to the right. QB up the middle and going nowhere. And that... Fairview front continues to prove impenetrable. That's number 77 right there. Stands him up and brings him down. That's a large man. Almost got kind of a nose guard build. Plays that tackle on that four-man front, but almost like a guard. And uh, they've just had really no success running this ball up the middle. As Deuce going to take it to the right side. Falling into the end zone. Touchdown, Comets. And there you go right there, Deuce Strip. Getting the comments on the board here for the first time. And I uh, tell you what, that all started there on special teams on a great return. Kind of dug into the bag of tricks. And, wow, that uh, is going to flip a lot of momentum here. As you get this ball after halftime, and it's just a two-score game, is I think they were definitely feeling it there, that kick a little bit low as uh, these boys are amped up. But I tell you what, i got to give a little round of applause for your comments here. Great answer here right before halftime. And some things to go over here in the locker room is, tell you what, this is just a two-score game. A lot of football left to play, and, you know, the school board hasn't really been uh, indicative of how the game has been played so far. They've done really, really good. You can talk about defensively. They've had a three-turnover on downs situation, however you word that or say that. You know, they've had uh, some set success here and there uh, on the ground offensively. And, again, this is a two-time state champ back-to-back. You see how good their quarterback play is, how good they are up front. Not a lot of holes. Uh, and, again, just came off a tough game. They went all the way up on the road, uh, made that long drive to Hooker in the Panhandle last week. So you know they're coming in hot head, a little bit upset after a tough loss. So everything kind of working against the Comets. I'll tell you what, they're playing a heck of a game, really fighting here, and um, still got a lot left to play. This is one of those nights I'm missing my friend Coach Phillips who uh, doesn't have that second headset. He's over there working the clock tonight. Miss it, missing my amigo over there. Love you, Coach Phillips. Wish you were over here. You can come over here anytime. <laughs> I don't love you, though, Josh. You're mean because you're mean to me. That was a great That was, wasn't it? That was a great throw. We are live, by the way, but I don't care. That was a great throw. So comments will take their third and final charge timeout. As uh, 
We're having a little fun up here in the press box. Got a lot going on. Got Kitty Cheer coming up here. Is <laughs> hey, no littering. <laughs> hey, David, yeah, somebody's been pouring. <laughs> somebody's been pouring. Water on me from the top. Kason's Kason's been do he's been every time I get under here he takes that tea and just pours like a little sip on me. I know, they're they they are mean. They're mean. Alright, here we go. Swear swear I'm gonna I'm gonna climb that ladder in a minute. They I know they gotta come down. Hey, at some point you're gonna need snacks and you're gonna have to come down here. Just wait till you get down here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Kick off time. Probably fans at home wondering what on earth is going on in that press box. Well, it's a lot of fun. We're having fun here on the football field and having fun up here in the box. It's World Series game one tonight, too, as it kicks off here. There you go. Great job. Comet fans love to see that. Into the end zone. No chance for return. No good uh, starting field position. Really, really good there. Good execution on the special teams. So, 18 seconds here. No timeouts. We'll look to see what they do offensively. Is this a matter of, again, they, you know, they went bang, bang, one play, go route down the field for a touchdown last time. Do they try it again? You know, do they try it again? Shotgun set. It's a two by two. Wouldn't be surprised to see them take another chunk play here. This front's going to have to get after it. As this time gets out of the pocket, runs down the field. Cuts back inside. Down at the 35, 36-yard line. It's just 10 seconds left. They'll spot the ball. White had to wind the clock. because They're going to have to really, really quickly get back up here and snap. They've been doing it all night. So it's a two-by-two -two shotgun set here. Let's it fly. Here we go. It's a go out intended for number four. That one out of bounds. What do we got left on the clock? Three seconds. So that'll kill the clock. Incomplete pass. And well defended there. Double coverage. Good job from the end there on the back side towards the boundary. And you really just need one more of those. If you're the defense, you got to keep everything in front of you. That's got to be the message here if you're the DBs. Keep everything in front of you. Drop back. If you give up a little bit of yardage here, it does not matter. Three seconds left. You're just guarding the end zone at this point. So keep everybody back and uh, kind of avoid one more drop plays. Again, look, they're only sending four at the line of scrimmage, dropping everybody back. So they got seven back. So here goes the QB. And, again, you can live with this, right? You can live with this, but you got to – yep, you got to – there you go. Get into the boundary. Get them out of bounds. Good job there, Comets. It's exactly what you needed to do right there. And the Comets are going to halftime, just trailing by two scores. And they're fighting hard here, so – Great first half. Lots to talk about. We're going to take a little break first. We got Kitty Cheer coming up. Military Appreciation Night. So much more. And then a whole other half of football right here on HintComments.tv. All right. Life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. Tired of complicated Wi Fi management? Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi makes it easy. With Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi, you can set your Wi Fi password, view all your connected devices, and even run speed tests all from your phone. Need to set up parental controls? No problem. Simple, smart, secure. Stay connected and in control with Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi. Visit GoPioneer.com to learn more. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. 
delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years, has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Two words, cash back. Two more words, you're welcome. Remember that jar in your dresser where you would throw your loose change at the end of the day? Then occasionally, you take the jar to the bank to have it counted and enjoy a bit of a surprise to find there is more in there than you thought. That's Square One Banking, the account with a virtual money jar, and it's offered exclusively by Legacy Bank. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. Tired of complicated Wi Fi management? Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi makes it easy. With Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi, you can set your Wi Fi password, view all your connected devices, and even run speed tests all from your phone. Need to set up parental controls? No problem. Simple, smart, secure. Stay connected and in control with Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi. Visit GoPioneer.com to learn more. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG 
Energy team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success. So visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Two words, cash back. Two more words, you're welcome. Remember that jar in your dresser where you would throw your loose change at the end of the day? Then occasionally, you take the jar to the bank to have it counted and enjoy a bit of a surprise to find there was more in there than you thought. That's Square One Banking, the account with a virtual money jar, and it's offered exclusively by Legacy Bank. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. tired of complicated Wi-Fi management? Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi makes it easy. With Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi, you can set your Wi-Fi password, view all your connected devices, and even run speed tests all from your phone. Need to set up parental controls? No problem. Simple, smart, secure. Stay connected and in control with Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi. Visit GoPioneer.com to learn more. Stream with 
Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Two words, cash back. Two more words, you're welcome. Remember that jar in your dresser where you would throw your loose change at the end of the day? Then occasionally, you take the jar to the bank to have it counted and enjoy a bit of a surprise to find there is more in there than you thought. That's Square One Banking, the account with a virtual money jar, and it's offered exclusively by Legacy Bank. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. Tired of complicated Wi Fi management? Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi makes it easy. With Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi, you can set your Wi Fi password, view all your connected devices, and even run speed tests all from your phone. Need to set up parental controls? No problem. Simple, smart, secure. Stay connected and in control with Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi. Visit GoPioneer.com to learn more.
dream with Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success. So visit us today at theamgteam.com. Hi, Mimi. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging, work seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Diesel Horse Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Diesel Horse get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Two words, cash back. Two more words, you're welcome. Remember that jar in your dresser where you would throw your loose change at the end of the day? Then occasionally, you take the jar to the bank to have it counted and enjoy a bit of a surprise to find there is more in there than you thought. That's Square One Banking, the account with a virtual money jar, and it's offered exclusively by Legacy Bank. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. Tired of complicated Wi Fi management? Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi makes it easy. With Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi, you can set your Wi Fi password, view all your connected devices, and even run speed tests all from your phone. Need to set up parental controls? No problem. Simple, smart, secure. Stay connected and in control with Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi. Visit GoPioneer.com to learn more.
dream with Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Two words, cash back. Two more words, you're welcome. Remember that jar in your dresser where you would throw your loose change at the end of the day? Then occasionally, you take the jar to the bank to have it counted and enjoy a bit of a surprise to find there is more in there than you thought. That's Square One Banking, the account with a virtual money jar. And to the right! Got ACDC cranking up here. It is time for the second half of football. 21-6 ball game, but I tell you what, it just feels so much closer than that. Comets get the ball here, trailing by two scores. It's been a great game, a lot to talk about here from the first half. You know, again, three stops defensively, a turnover on downs three times for the Comets defense. You know, Fairview comes out towards the end, gets a big TD pass on a go route, and the Comets drop a little trickeration and answer right back. And this has been a close game. The scoreboard is not really showing that, but the Comets are still going to have uh, a real good opportunity here. Need to score on this drive. It's coming out here, mowing them down at the 30-yard line. Good return there. This is where your Comets will get the ball here to start the game here in the second half. I know it says second quarter there. It's not. It's the third quarter, so we'll go ahead and change that if I can. Um, but again... One thing they're going to, you know, we'll talk about some things here. Offensively, they've done some good things. One of the things they're going to have to change here is, you know, again, for the Commons to have success, they're going to have to run the ball well. We've seen them kind of have some hits at times, but, you know, they really thrive on getting that C gap, you know, that, that gap outside the tackle. Uh, they've done a, you know, that's where their bread and butter is. And, you know, you just got to give a little testament to Fairview. They've done a good job of kind of containing the edge, not giving them those running lanes. Those lanes are going to have to open up for them to have some success. It's this time they just go straight up the gut. But there's that Fairview front again showing strong. And it's just been a lot of, you know, it's been tough. And I know, you know, you don't want to run right up the middle because you got those two big guards or nose guard type players. We call them tackles in a four-man front but or a 43. But, uh, you know, they are almost a kind of <laughs> kind of a nose guard size. You don't really want to go up the middle against those big boys because it's been tough. But, you know, again, at some point in time, you're going to have to mix it up because those, you know, the, the running to the outside has just not been there for you. So uh, they try it there on first down and don't really have a whole lot of success. This time, shotgun set, one receiver out on each end, drops the pass. Good catch there by Gomez who has the high point. And they'll bring him down at the 35-yard line. And that's a good gain right there. Fans not happy about that late contact on the ground. Oh, my goodness. The Fairview says they got it, and the official says they do too. As I'll say, that ball went out late on the hit before he went to the ground, and fans not thrilled at that. As the officiating crew will talk this one over, and that's brutal right there. I didn't see that, of course. The ball to Gomez's backside. I'm guessing that ball must have just came out before he went to the ground. And, uh, wow, that's an unfortunate break right there as the Comets could not have that in a two-score game here trying to keep momentum on their side. So now defense got to turn around here quick. Pistol formation. Two by two. Wasting no time. Snap. Let's it pass. Hits him. Serves as a block on the outside. Has enough for the first. Stays in bounds. Weaving still on his feet. Walking into the end zone. And they go for the gut. 
right on the first play. Touchdown, Fairview. And again, just nice job there. They've done a lot tonight right around the line of scrimmage, kind of in that hook curl zone. Just kind of hit a man, a little short hitch route. And then again, nice thing when you cut out, it almost kind of acts as a little screen or a little bubble because you've got the outside defender that starts blocking. Got a good block on the outside. Foot race, just had to make one man miss. Kind of walked into the end zone. So good play there by Fairview. Good execution. And just like that, they're taking now uh, what I would call a commanding lead. Point after is up. And it's good. So 28-6, and just like that, you see that quick strike ability from Fairview. We'll take a quick break and be right back here on HintComics.tv. It's offered exclusively by Legacy Bank. Surface expert. Properties all. All right, I want to welcome you back here. Comets trailing 28-6 to six right there on a backbreaker turnover and then a quick strike in one play from the Yellow Jackets. So now the Comets really have their work cut out for them here on the return and as they get that to about the 20-yard line. And Fairview really, really hyped up there on the far side. They've got kind of all the momentum rolling in their favor. So now the Comets got to get out there and grab that momentum back, get it back in their favor and, you know, this is, again, this is a tough situation for the Comets because this team is built to win the time of possession. They're built to run the ball well, kind of have these long extended drives. But now you're trailing by multiple scores, not in a position where you can really be in your element. So at this point in time, what you really got to do is you just got to make it a little bit of battles, right? Little battles at a time. We got to go out here. We got to keep a hold of this football. You got to keep turning it over. And we got to get some points. We got to get a good drive with some points. Then get that defense out there and let's fight another battle. But, you know, they have to have some points on this drive. It's just a keeper to the edge here. Does a nice job of getting off his block. But a good run there by Graydon. Pushed out of bounds about the 34-yard line. And I tell you what, that's going to be real close enough for the first. It should be enough to move the chains. That's a great carry there from Davini. And, wow, that's got to be enough for the first. There we go. Going to move the chains. And that's not something you've seen there a lot from the Comets tonight. That run to the outside, that QB lead, having much success on. They, you know, nine out of ten weeks they are going to have a ton of success on that play. And this is just one of those where it hasn't been there. And so nice job right there. That's a good sign for your Comets. You'd like to see them continue to have success with that. As they're going to draw back the pass. And, whoo, number four jumps that route. As he was biting on it earlier, and Gomez made him pay for it. But that time, just enough in there to break it up. Incomplete pass there intended for Gomez. And they're really aggressive on the outside. That's one thing I've noticed tonight. Uh, they understand they've got a multiple score lead, and they want to add to that, and they're taking some risks. You know, again, your risk of doing that is you try to jump it, and they, you know, you get burned on the backside. But if you can get out in front of a route, you got a chance to get a turnover, and uh, that's kind of what you're seeing tonight from these outside DBs, these outside corners uh, from Fairview. As this time they're going to get it to Cotter, who has to make a man miss. Nice job cutting back inside. There you kind of see him out there on the inside trying to get him to spill back inside and uh, trying to tackle him. And Cotter does a great job there of kind of making a miss, getting some extra yards after the touch. So a uh, good run there by Peyton. And, I can't, you know, again, I can't say enough about Peyton and Colton – or uh, Peyton and Logan, excuse me. Both of those two boys just – 
<laughs> do such a great job of carrying the ball. They do a nice job of kind of taking some uh, snaps off of uh, Deuce, kind of keep him fresh throughout the course of the game. You know, that's a man who's on the football field a lot, so they kind of alleviate him a little bit and uh, make his workload just a little bit lighter, and they do a good job when they got the ball in their hands. As we're going to the QB lead here, this time has to go way outside. They have enough for the first. That's another good bang-bang play on the QB lead. As he has to get way outside on that one. Is they do initially a good job containing, but um, just had to turn a corner. And once he turned a corner, he did have a block to go with it, and that's what he's going to have to do. You know, he's going to have to really turn the wheels up, going east to west here. Um, that kind of C gap is not really open, but if you bounce outside a little bit further, there might be some opportunities if you get some good outside blocks. So, like I see Colton Helms out there, you know, Gomez can block too. So, um, that's where you're going to have to get with that play. As this time he drops back to pass. Good route from Colton, but also well defended from number two. A little bit of contact, kind of handsy there. The officials are going to let him play through that as – one thing you see from the officiating crew this evening, not a lot of penalties, you know. They're letting these boys play. You know, this is a lot of passing. This is probably the most uh, passing attempts between these two teams that we've seen on uh, the Comets football field, Jim Sire field, uh, all season long. And, you know, when you start seeing a lot of passing attempts, that's when, you know, holding calls and pass interference and things like that typically get called. But not tonight. They're letting them play a little bit, you know, letting them be physical and uh, – the football fan to me does like to see that as long as it's not too egregious. So they'll snap it here, going straight up the gut. Well defended there, brought down. It's caught her with the carry, but number 70 wraps up well, and it's a gain of one. So minimal gain and third down and long. If you're the comments here, you're sitting at midfield. Nine minutes here in the third quarter. Have to wonder, we're down by multiple scores. Is this four down territory? You know, it doesn't really matter with Fairview field position. You know, they can strike quickly from just about anywhere on the football field. If you get yourself, you know, hey, we don't have to get all nine yards in one play. Let's try to get this fourth and five or fourth and four, you know, and make it four down territory. I have to believe any time they get on the other side of the 50, they're going to do that. Is this time rolling it out. Is looking for Deuce, who's not open, and uh, just has to get this ball out, trying to avoid the sack. Nice job there by Davini outside that tackle box, of course. And so just an ink goes on the board as an incomplete pass. But I tell you what, that's a great move there by Graydon. You don't want to take that sack because then that puts you, you know, fourth down and really long, 13 or 14. Instead, it's fourth down and nine. And I uh, have to imagine this is going to bring the punt team out. Not really a situation where you can afford to go for it here. And just, uh, again, on that little uh, play action there, probably intended to go to Deuce. And uh, they just had the play well defended. And Greg kind of had to try to make something else out of it and just wasn't theirs. Puts a boot into that one. Pretty good kick. I think the uh, – Line judge is going to spot at the 25-yard line, so Fairview's going to get the ball right about there. As we'll take a quick break and be right back here in just a moment on HintComets.tv. Over Oklahoma, give us a call today to schedule your repair. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. All right, so here we go. Wasting no time here. Back out of the break. Hands it off. Up the middle. Shakes off a defender. Finally brought down there at the 34-yard line. Good carry there on first down. So he'll have almost enough for the first. Call it nine on the carry. Sanging down in one. And you've seen Fairview, as much as, you know, as much as they pass the ball, there's been some times tonight where you can see they want to establish a run. They want to prove that they can have some success up front against this Comets front seven. As this time, going to the edge, cutting back inside. Here we go. Has an open gap. Foot race. Can he be caught? Gomez, open field tackle, brings him down at the 25-yard line. And that's a big chunk play on the ground as you kind of feel the back starting to break there as great play there from the Yellow Jackets. And uh, just a great carry. You know, they're really, really doing well up front tonight. I think they've done a great job of kind of containing this Comet front. And, uh, you know, as the score starts to get, the deficit gets larger and larger. You know, staying in this battle is going to be uh, more and more difficult. And I think Fairview is just going to take advantage of that with these chunk plays. As, as a two-back set, two back set flags flying on the field. we got a flag up here in the press box. they got a tickling flag going on up here. As Athletic Director Jared Holman comes up here and uh, I promise I didn't uh, have a conniption fit right there. Just uh, whew, 
There was a tickle or two, and I tell you what, as he goes on the stairs, that's a that's a great man right there, our athletic director Jared Holman. You know, he's a busy man tonight. We got Kitty Cheer going on, Military Appreciation Night. You guys probably saw him at midfield, and and on top of that, you know, coaching softball, and um, you know, he just does so many great things, and uh, he's a good dude. Comes up here and checks on us and everything. So, little confusion there on the snap. His comments are going to bring him down. It's a gaggle of comments. Brings him down, and uh, definitely some miscommunication there. As I'm not sure either of those three players knew who needed to have the ball there. So just a, uh, a lot of sloppiness there on the exchange. And Comets will take advantage of that. That's a big loss there. Caught about second down and 16. And, uh, again, not in the clear <laughs> with this passing attack, but that's a good sign. Going backwards, right? So working quickly here with that staying in that two-back set. Two receivers to the right side. Snap. And both those are going to protect. Finds a man open in the flats. Thought he didn't have it secured for a second. Finally does. Brought down the 25-yard line. That's a good reception there. That chews back a lot of those lost yardage. Makes it about third down and seven. And you like how they do that right there. They got that two-back set. Which again, they can run them on wheel routes. They can use them on lead plays. But more importantly, they can also keep them back there to protect. You've seen them do that several snaps. They use those backs to protect because they know the Comets like to blitz linebackers. They know how good that, that uh, defensive line is. And that just gives them some more aid. It gives that quarterback more protection. As uh, this time, has to get this ball out quickly. A little slant pattern. Nice job there. Caught by number one at the 15-yard line. And uh, that was a clean pocket. Quarterback did take a little bit of a late shot and kind of slow to get up. And, ooh, man, I tell you what, if you're Fairview, you hold your breath because I get the feeling that uh, the success of this team rides on number 15 right there. Is, again, we talked about it, one of the best uh, QBs I've seen play on this field in the last few years. And, you know, that dynamically changes their uh, the way they can run their offenses. Ooh. No free play in high school. That's definitely a flag. <laughs> but uh, be a five-yard penalty encroachment. And, it's again, that's not like in uh, college or the pros. They don't get to snap it and run a free play. It's just a five-yard penalty. But that does inch them a little bit closer to the end zone. So first down and five. As uh, That's something to monitor tonight. As 15 was a little, you know, teammates <laughs> got him up real fast. Said, get up, get up, you're good. <laughs> but, again, uh, kind of something to watch here. We'll see if he kind of favors uh, one leg when he walks. You know, kind of was walking up a little bit slow, but staying in the game. Trips left. Man in motion. Little swing right here with blocks down the field. Great play design. Going to be very close to enough for the tutty, and they'll say he has it. So what a great play design there. Trips left. They knew exactly what they wanted, a little swing pattern. Get it out to him. Get him open space. You use those receivers in trips left to block down the field. Again, not a not an overly complicated concept. Don't want to make it sound like the, a genius play. But, you know, hey, good play, good execution, and uh, six more on the board for the Yellow Jackets. As they set up to kick the extra point. Oh, we got a flag here. And, ooh, that, that ball just crossed. But it was a, uh, tell you what, it barely made it to the goal post. We'll get the penalty here. Yep, so five-yard penalty. Got to re-kick. And uh, that's going to be a little bit more difficult now here as he's been perfect on extra point attempts tonight. Going to have to kick this one a little bit deeper, five yards back. And so here we go. Number 35, kicker for the Yellow Jackets. Snap. Hold is good. Kick is up. Oh, and <laughs> doing. <laughs> oh, man. It don't matter who does that. I can't resist doing that. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, tell you what, that's the difference in that penalty right there. It's why, you know, every single yard matters on the football field. He's had a perfect night kicking extra points. Thought maybe it was going to be, you know, through the uprights right there, just a little bit wide left, enough to hit that uh, <laughs> enough to hit that outside pole. And, and uh, extra point attempt, no good. So, one little break here for the comments. He trailed 34-6. Of course, we'll stay live right here on HintComments.tv. We'll talk about some things, right? It's been a good game so far. It's kind of gotten away from the comments. But, you know, now we've got to start zooming out a little bit, looking at the bigger pictures. You know, we talked about the pregame show with Coach Potter. There's a lot to play for, even if you drop this game tonight. You know, third place in this district. 
going to be wide open. You've got two games left. You've got to go on the road next week against Cashin. And I tell you, Cashin's one of those teams the last couple of years. We can contend with Cashin. That is a game we can absolutely win. But you've got to clear all those hurdles, right? You've got that, you know, <clears throat> you got to clear the hurdle of understanding mentally that you know you can beat this team, that you can hang with this team. You know, last year kind of went into that game unsure of ourselves and Cashin was kind of out for blood, and it was a tough game. You know, it just did not go our way, and we've got to have that mental understanding that, hey, we're good. We're a good football team. We're good up front. Cashin is not as good as the Cashin of a few years ago, and that's a game that we can go in and win, and that's a game that the Comets are going to have to win if they want that third-place spot. Then we're going to be at home the last week of the season against Sayre. That's going to be another really good football game. Sayre's a solid team. I think they've kind of surprised a few of us to the upside. You know, we've been looking at scores in the past few weeks. They've had some games in there where it's like, wow, you know, that's surprising. We, it, I can't even remember in my nine years of here being here, us playing Sayer in recent years. We've played them before. It's been a long time in the past, but so Sayer kind of surprising to the upside. That's going to be a battle. You know, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a hard-fought battle. And the Comets have a great chance to go 2-0 and in these last two weeks. Assuming they go 2-0 and in these last two weeks, they're going to have an opportunity, basically, that would put them at third in the district. And that's... You know, at this point, if you finish third, you're probably going to a Walters or you're going to a Winnie Wood or you might even be going to a Minko. And, of course, we opened the season against Minko. It was a really close game. Uh, Comets led for a majority of the game there. That's a big hit. Comets led for a majority of the game. Had an opportunity to win that game. We've played Walters multiple times throughout the year. We've had, uh, or through the years, we've had a really good success against Walters. That's a team we've always played well. And again, Winnie Wood, that's that's a little bit of a drive, and that's kind of a toss-up. So you get that third spot in the district. You are going on the road. As remember, the top two uh, in the district get a home playoff game. You are going on the road, but you're going to play a formidable opponent that is also a winnable game for you to advance in the playoffs. And if somebody uh, is still listening to this stream and knows the last time the Comets won a playoff game in advanced, uh, that would be an awesome trivia question to answer because uh, the Aflac trivia, we are not sponsored by Aflac. We are sponsored by Blue Sky Bank, by the way. Uh, but that would be a great one to send me. When is the last time, what's the last year, the comments advanced, uh, won a playoff game in football in advance? I would love to know the answer to that. Um, some in my mind that I'm thinking of is, uh, my first guess would be 2013, and uh, if not 2013, maybe somewhere around 2007, 2006, probably somewhere in there. Uh, for my football brainiacs watching this at home, uh, let me know. If you know the answer to that, um, I'd love to know the answer to that. When's the last time the comments advanced? It's been a while, but you'll have an opportunity if you get third place in district. You're going to get a game that you can contend and win. So... District's wide open, right? You also could finish fifth in the district, too, if you if you go 1-1 one and one or you go 0-2. Oh so uh, there's a lot to play for. This is a wide open district. You know, I've called it a top-heavy district, essentially. And uh, what I mean by that is you've got Hooker in this district who is just, you know, you don't want to crown anybody early, but it's they're going to go very deep into the playoffs unless something goes horribly wrong. They're going to be a major contender for the, a state title. You've got Fairview, of course you're seeing right here on your screen a very good football team definitely going to be a team that goes deep into the playoffs and then third on down it's why it's a wide open race you know teams three through six or three through seven it is a wide open race um comments could finish as good as third they could finish as low as fifth it's going to just depend on how these last two weeks go and uh so it's gonna be a lot of fun definitely something to tune in and watch and um on the field here of course fairview getting ready to get the ball as uh, it's a 34 to 6 ball game here in the third quarter <clears throat> for those just uh, tuning in it's been a really good uh, ball game of course it's gotten away from the comments a little bit here these last few minutes but tell you what this scoreboard like i've said not an indicator of how this game has gone this has been a really good game comments have just had a couple of big mistakes and uh, fairview just has that quick strike ability on offense but you know at one point in time this was looking like this could be a one score game in the second half. It's just um, nice carry there right at the middle. Good spin move inside the 40. It's just kind of gotten away from them. And, you know, at this point in time, it's as the score starts to go up, you start to see body language. You know, you're trying to fight through some things. You know the game is kind of – it's not over, but it's kind of over. So I think a lot of what goes on at this point, it's hard to be too judgmental about. When the getting was good, the first half, and then, you know, the first few minutes of the third quarter, this – you got to see a Comet team that was hanging in there and, and contending. Um, 
you know, one or two plays go differently, it could be a tie, very well have been a tie ball game. So, um, you know, I'm super proud of this Commerce team. I think they've done such a great job. You know, we don't quite have the numbers. You know, I th I, I'm not sure if a little over 20 suiting up. We don't quite have the numbers that Fairview has. But i tell you what, our, our coaching staff has done such a great job of maximizing uh, this team. You know, we've got some great players who are playing their butts off too. But, you know, our coaching staff is also doing a great job of maximizing these players. And if you, I think if you finish third in the district, that's a lot. That, that's a lot to be proud of. So, we'll check it these last two weeks. It should be fun. Of course, both games going to be right here on HintonComics.tv. HintonComics.tv, of course, sponsored by Blue Sky Bank. Got to give them a little shout out. The official sponsor, HintonComics.tv. And uh, yeah, that's how we're rocking and rolling so far. And uh, whoo, kind of keeping a score here. I know some fans at home know that uh, I happen to be a little bit of a fan of baseball, as it's a it's a tough game. It's two to one. Yankees leading the Dodgers. Bases loaded, two outs, one zero count. So just kind of keeping an eye on it here. Is, that's a good start, right? You had a uh, Jack Flaherty on the mound, Garrett Cole on the bump for the Yanks. It's a good game one in L.A. So it's a two three two format, I believe. Two in L.A., three in New York, and then two back. So he's gonna hand the ball off. Man, just really good running there. Just does a nice job of kind of shifting through to the second level. Um, you know, just kind of cuts off of each tackle or each block um, until he finds a gap. You know, 25 is doing a great job carrying this ball, and they didn't have this much success in the first half running the ball. You're kind of starting to wear down this Comet front. Now you're starting to see some of these lanes open up and uh, some just some good ball carrying from the back as well. So, um, I believe too, and I'll have to take a look at our schedule here, um, I believe we have a um, cross country has some things going on this weekend too as I will uh, look at our schedule here uh, we do actually so again uh, cross country they are going to be at regionals tomorrow that is going to be uh, at OBA which is in Enid so they'll be competing in cross uh, cross country regionals tomorrow as uh, Fairview finds the end zone once again for six more so we'll give a little shout out to Cross Country and good luck to them tomorrow. I'm sure they're going to be up and early. They'll probably be in Enid before Mr. Er, before Coach Allen's even awake. So uh, <laughs> good luck to them. Uh, again, want to give a shout out tonight's our military appreciation game. We gave the all of our armed forces a uh, salute at halftime. Gave them some recognition. Thought that was really well done. The band sounded great. Led in the direction of Misty Hickman. Uh, we had a lot of our veterans down there too that are in active uh, duty. Former in active duty, and uh, I think mostly veterans down there. They did an awesome job, well job by Coach Holman. Good job putting all that on. Um, the tribute with the flags was really cool to see, and then we had our kitty cheer out there tonight. A lot of parents bringing their kiddos. It was a lot of fun, all dressed in their uh, red and white, looking all adorable. So, you know, that was uh, a lot of fun too. So, a lot going on tonight here on Military Appreciation Night, and. Uh, also, got to give a shout out, you know, since we are talking about cheer, uh, you know, got to give some recognition to Charlie Van Hus. You know, she made a uh, all region cheer. They'll have the all state tryouts for that next week. So, again, that's a multi sport athlete. You know, she's a place catcher, uh, bats in the middle of the order for the Comet softball team. And uh, she's a good performer in cheer, too, you know. And so she's going to have an uh, have a opportunity here next week going to all state tryouts, advancing past uh, or making all region cheer. So, congrats to her. Is good pressure there. Kyle kind of forces him out to the outside, turns a corner, boom, laying the hammer there, and finally bringing him out of bounds, and helping Graydon up there on the far side. Minute 19 left here in the third. For those just watching, just kind of talking about some things, you know, kind of keeping you guys in the know. It's a uh, I always like doing this. The game starts to get away a little bit. We just kind of have some conversation time for those of you still watching on HintonComics.tv. And, of course, we'll break away when the Comets do some good things and have some big plays. And the rest of the time we'll be talking all things Comets. we has got an empty set. Or no, excuse me, not an empty set. we got a shotgun set with one back. It's a two-by-two, two, man in motion. Hands it to the motion. Oh, man, does a good job of making one man miss. That ball looks like it. Oh, man, I thought the ball was out. That should be Comet Ball. Yeah, and the Comet fans like that one. Good job there. He got a little bit too nifty trying to weave through the defenders, and that ball just kind of comes squirting out. I'm not sure uh, who exactly fell on that. Uh, it might have been Derek Pratt that fell on that. Either way, we had a big man fall on that. It's either him or Teagan. So either way, there's that turnover. 
course, for the Commerce thing, why couldn't we add that earlier in the game? You know, uh, they they were so close on several of those uh, earlier in the night. You know, they would have liked to have that one earlier. But hey, a turnover is a turnover, and you'll take it. Trailing down 34-6 here with 54 seconds left in the third. Now they're gonna have deep. Uh, Little tough field position here, right? Starting down here deep inside the uh, five, I think right about the five yard line. So again, you don't want to turn it right back over here. Going to probably keep this ball on the ground. See uh, Connor back there with Devinny and the shotgun set. Hands it off. Got to find a hole. Gets to the outside. Flag on the play. Probably a little hold as uh, usually a run to the outside. That's uh, penalized, especially with where the official was at that spot throwing the flag. Probably a hold. It's going to be uh, half the distance to the goal. And they'll have to redo this play. to be. Uh, I don't know if it'll be a loss down or not. It is a holding penalty. So half the distance. And replay first down. Oh, my goodness. Coach Allen got something right about football. I wouldn't, couldn't remember for a second there if they replayed the down there when it's half the distance in high school or not. But they will uh, replay first down. As anytime they bounce a run to the outside, especially with where that official threw the flag, he knew it was going to be more than likely a holding call. And uh, luckily from where you're at, it's not the, it's not the most hurtful penalty. But you're uh, going to have to probably keep this ball on the ground here. Don't want to cough it up or have a safety or anything like that. So, and Yeah. Okay, clock saying still, white hat not winding. <laughs> 53 seconds. Got him stacked on the line of scrimmage. It's a keeper play here right up the gut, and that'll get him a yard or two closer to getting out of that danger zone. And uh, going to more than likely be one more play here in the third quarter. Got 34 on the play clock, 40 on the game clock, so it'll be one more play. And uh, second down and... Call second down to 10, so more than likely going to be keeping this ball on the ground, of course, stacking them up on the line of scrimmage as Kyle Harrell coming in. Is he maybe going to play along that wing or, you know, kind of not sure if it'll be like an inline kind of tight end or just plays along that wing. Either way, getting that, uh, getting the big man to block. Yeah, just going to kind of play him in line with the hands in the dirt. It's going right up the gut again, getting a few yards back. We'll call it third down and seven on the keeper play, and that's going to be the end of the third as your comments trailing 34-6, to six, trying to make it a formidable fourth quarter here. We'll take a quick break and be right back on HintonComments.tv. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. tired of complicated Wi-Fi management? Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi makes it easy. With Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi, you can set your Wi-Fi password, view all your connected devices, and even run speed tests all from your phone. Need to set up parental controls? No problem. Simple, smart, secure. Stay connected and in control with Go Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi. Visit GoPioneer.com to learn more. All right, I want to welcome you guys back here. Start of the fourth quarter. Comments trailing 34-6. Just uh, trying to have a respectable close to game here. Passing play. Good open field tackle there. He's trying to get away from that one. Gets, to Kyle, gets Kyle Harrell on that one. It's going to be fourth and short. And going to have to punt this ball. Tell you what, that's a nice job right there. I like getting Kyle Harrell involved in the passing game. Again, he's 
tall, long, athletic, you know, <laughs> plays really good off the edge. That's a man, you know, they tried a couple of weeks ago. They had a play on a seam route up the middle. They kind of had him in line as a tight end, and they had it. It was a good draw, just didn't quite execute. But that's a that's a man that you, you don't mind seeing them scheme uh, in the passing attack. He's uh, very capable. As That's a pretty good punt right there. He puts a good, puts a good leg into that one. Is tell you what, it is a nice for the Commons to have that element as they're going to down it right there. At, we'll call it the 43-yard line by Jacob Bonniewell. And so right there, Comet's going to get back here on defense. It's, again, just 11 minutes left to play here. Got a fourth quarter. As, uh, again, you're trying to close this out, trying to get some things. You know, again, you want to stay healthy. To my knowledge, I haven't really had anybody hurt tonight. So if you can get out of this game relatively healthy, that's good. I, I say relatively because it's football season and it's week eight. Um, nobody is completely healthy. If you're completely healthy at this point of the season, you're not uh, not out there on the field taking snaps. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Everybody at this point of the season is, uh, if they're playing the game, they're hurt in some way. They're out there playing through something. So stay relatively healthy and find something to build on, right? What are some things that we can carry over into the next two weeks as we get down to that critical stretch where we're trying to you know, finish third in this district, trying to get a top three spot? And uh, I think that's what you do here this last you know, quarter of the play. Get out there, play respectable, try to find some things that you can, you know, build on for next week, this this last two weeks, and try to stay relatively healthy. Two to one in the sixth, end of the sixth, going to the seventh. One run ball game, Yankees Dodgers here. It's a good World Series. Um, for those that are watching, still have not answered, I still have not got an answer yet on my on my trivia question, trivia question from the last quarter was we got a flag on the play here, uh, probably a hold. Trivia question was what? Is, when is the last time that the Hinton Comets won a playoff game or advanced in the playoffs in football? My guess is we're either 2013 or 2006. Um, if I got any football dads or any football brainiacs that are watching, I know I got a lot of. Uh, we got several in the community that played back in the day, or that just followed this program really close, and they can tell you. So if you know, um, I would love for you to answer. Um, I'm genuinely asking this question. This will be our trivia question of the night. Um, let me know, because they're going to have an opportunity. Like I said, they're going to have an opportunity to to do that. In my in my view, I think they're going to have an opportunity to do that this year. Um, like I said, you finished top three. We talked about some of the teams you could face. Winnie Wood, Walters, Minko. You know, you played Minko earlier in the season. You hung in there. You had a chance to win. Uh, we've played Walters in the past. We've always done well against Walters. Winnie Wood, that's a drive. Not, you know, again, that's a toss-up. But uh, you've got a chance. You know, I think you've really got a chance to get a good draw for playoffs in advance. So, um, if you know that, go ahead and tell us. We've got some good fans, too, here. There's times I've uh, – I was talking the other day about, you know, something I said in the fourth quarter of a 40-point game, and someone someone actually knew what I was saying. Um, we do have some great fans here at NintCombs.tv that watch this all the way through. And, again, very thankful for you guys. As, uh, we wouldn't – you know, again, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. We do this because you guys, and we do this uh, – I'm enabled to do this because of the community. You know, we've got such a great community. All the stands tonight here at home <coughs> were full. And, uh, you know, it don't matter. You know, people can say, well, you know, kitty cheer night. It don't matter. We were on the road last week over fall break, and our and that, that homes or the opposing side fans were, were packed. Our fans travel extremely well. It doesn't matter what's going on. Um, you know, we've just got such great community support and fan support, and that extends to HintComics.tv. I, I look at some of the numbers uh, from our streams, and I'm just super impressed. I know we've even got people out of the state that tune into HintComics.tv, so just want to give a big shout-out to you guys and say thank you because uh, you guys definitely make this possible, and so do our sponsors. You know, we've got some great local businesses, one of those, of course, being Blue Sky Bank, who sponsors this stream and sponsors HintComics.tv. You guys uh, make it happen, and Blue Sky Bank's a great business, and uh, I call it the bank across the street from the softball field because that's what it is. It's right over across from the softball and baseball field, and it's kind of the shining bank on the hill <laughs> as it kind of sits atop the hill on the uh, north side of town. It's big run play here. Turns on the Jets. Finally brought down at the 15-yard line. 
and the holes just kind of continuing. Is again, I don't want to get too judgmental in this running game. It's a, it's kind of a blowout game at this point. They're just kind of putting the final nails in the coffin. So some of these lanes that have not been here, of course, they're here now. You know, Fairview's playing with all the momentum, but again, I don't think it's an indication of anything for the Comets. This is just a game that's kind of gotten away from them. It's the closing minute, so Fairview just capitalizing on that a little bit as they'll hand the ball off again. This time, open field tackle. Brought down. Looks like, uh, yes, good job there by Crease Douglas. As the family up here waving them up there, they like that tackle right there in the backfield. And the holding play as well, too. So, nice job by the Comets. Even with the hole going nowhere. So, fourth down here for the Yellow Jackets. 6.45 here in the fourth. Shotgun set. Two by one. Snap. Looks that way. It's one-on-one -on -one to the outside. Tries to get in there. Oh, and a flag. There is hopefully not on Xander. That looked like pretty good coverage to the outside. Surely not a pass interference. We can call that all night long. Maybe a hold. And, I mean, judging by where that flag was thrown, you have to think it's on that, it's on that uh, coverage to the outside. Maybe pass interference. Okay, there it is. It, oh, holding defense right there. That's... That's unfortunate. That's tough. Hey, what's up? We're having fun up here is what we're doing. <laughs> Got the new licks up here. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun up here in the press box tonight. I hate that the scoreboard is not uh, reflective of that. I think it's been a great game. It's been a lot of fun. We've had so many people up here tonight in this press box. It's been a good time. Um, as he breaks the outside, makes one man miss. Oh, that ball's out. How about we get that one? Pick it up. Go. Go, young man. Let's go. Oh, and they whistled him down as Crease stripped him. Oh, my goodness. Crease. Er, as Crease stripped him right there. That ball was out. That's a scooping score. Oh, you hate to see that right there. They whistled him, whistled it dead. Oh. <laughs> so we'll say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Tom Finn's not happy with that one right there. And can't blame him. That's that's a tough that's a tough break right there. That's a tough break right there. <laughs> the comic fans making their making their voices heard. 
<laughs> I tell you what, that was a great job there by Crease. Either way, I don't care. Should be our ball. Snap. Up the middle. Stuffed. Going nowhere. Down you go. It's a pair of comments right there up the middle. That's a good job there. And that started with Jacob Bonniewell up the gut. Good job plugging a hole there. As he says, no, sir, you will not go. You shall not pass. <laughs> so 5.55 on the clock here. They're bringing a pair of subs. And they're going with a little bit more size here. So, you know, they're probably going to keep this ball on the ground, I'd imagine. Or if they do pass, it'll be a little swing pattern. You use those, uh, use those guys as blocks. And yeah, they're going to they're going to stack it up pretty heavy on the line of scrimmage here. They're going to keep this ball on the ground for sure, I'd imagine. As there they go to the left side, walking in for a touchdown. Fairview put six more on. And we're staring down the hole of a 40-burger right here on a cool October night. <sighs> and you just hate to see that right there. You feel so bad for the comments. Had an opportunity there. Crease got the ball out. You know, you'd like to see him turn over and thought they had a chance for a, for a turnover and a scoop and score, and it just, uh, just didn't happen. Gotta give props to Fairview there, continuing to execute. You know, it's a game that's essentially over, but hey, they're still out there playing ball and fighting hard, so extra point is good. So we'll put that on there, 41-6. And uh, we got 526 left here to play, so I have to imagine maybe one more drive here for the Comets. Probably uh, just go out there, try to do some things you can build on for the next two weeks. As again, I know it's a tough 41-6 ball game. It's uh, kind of demoralizing. But I tell you what, th this team does a really good job of, you know, not letting these kind of performances get them down in their psyche. They can let this roll off. You know, Coach Potter said in the pregame show, hey, you're either going to go out here and you're going to play one, you're going to win, and you get about 12 hours to celebrate, or you're going to get your butt kicked, you're going to lose, and you're going to have about 12 hours to get over it. You know, <laughs> That's just the way it goes in this business. You're going you're gonna to have some big wins. You're going to have some losses where you take one off the chin. But you know what? you got you got a day, and you got to move on. And that's one thing I think the comments do so well is win or lose, they don't hang on to those things for a long time. They kind of brush it off, move on to the next day, the next week, the next game, and I have no doubt uh, that going into next week they're going to be locked loaded in practice and getting ready for what should be a good game at Cashin. So let's get this 550 going. Return to the outside and pushed out of bounds at the 30 yard line. That's Colton Helms with the return. No post game interview of course. Uh, Occasionally we do those halftime interviews. Or we'll do some post-game interviews, a little post-game with Potter, but none lined up for tonight. So our next streaming event, of course, will be at Cash in next week, next Friday. Hoping that, again, I like that this weather's cooling down. You hate that fire threat. We're, we're dry right now, but, you know, you got two more weeks. You're like, we have not had that frosty, chilly game yet. I'm like, can we get to the end of the season? Because, uh, I, last year when we were at Cash and we did not get invited in the press box. And I know you can't believe that a guy like Coach Allen would not get invited in the press box. But uh, turns out they did not want my loud rambling mouth uh, next to the coaches in a press box for three hours. Who could imagine? But uh, they stuck us outside in the end zone. <laughs> and it was cold. It was, it was a game one, two. My Rangers were in the World Series that year. Uh, so you just hope with two weeks left we don't – uh, play a cold one, right? It's, it's uh, next week will be November. We got Halloween next Thursday. Don't knock on my door. No, I'm just kidding. You can knock on my door if you want. I'll have some candy. If you're an adult, you can knock on my door. I don't care. Any 40 year olds trick or treating, you can come on by. I got candy. Um, or you can bring your kids out. Um, I live. I, nope. I'm not gonna tell y'all where I live, but a lot of people know where I live. I live in one of the most popular streets in town. So I'm sure I'll have lots of trick-or-treaters. I'm going to have that candy stocked up. I'm a bit of a candy enthusiast myself. I like to eat chocolate. So that's why I'm built the way I'm built. So uh, I'll have plenty of candy. Come on by. It's Halloween. Trick-or-treating Thursday. And then Friday, we got November 1st. We turn the calendar on another month. Can you believe we are almost four at month number four of the school year? It's hard to believe. It's been a fun year so far. I'm having a great time. I know a lot of our teachers and coaches are. And 
Wow, nice run there. <laughs> There's that Connor strength right there. <laughs> That's right. And uh, good run there, good hard late run. As you like to see that fight late in the game, right? Playing with some pride, good carry there from Logan. Keeps that clock rolling. 345 left to play. See if the Commons can't put one more good drive together here. Keep this ball on the ground. And they're going back to Cotter there. It's a good game. Call it four. Looks like maybe about five. So another good run there. Just a heavy dose of Cotter on this last drive right here. <laughs> I'm missing. Uh, yep, yeah, it's Coach Phillips down there. Missing. I'm missing a heavy dose of uh, Coach Phillips up here in the press box tonight, working that clock over there, doing a great job, man. That 40 second clocks look good all night. 25 second clocks look good all night. <laughs> it's looked good all night. But we miss him with that headset on here. Told him, I said, hey, he's going to come out to cash in next week. Even if it's 20 degrees outside, he's going to be out there cash with that headset on. <laughs> Parked in the end zone with our pop out table. <laughs> and ready to have a good time with us. We miss you. We miss you, Coach Phillips. Even though I can literally see you right across from here, we miss. We still miss you. His Yankees are up two to one right now. I'm a little, little sore about that. I'm wanting the Doyers to get a win here. It is bottom of the seventh, though. Got a runner on first, no outs. I'm calling both, sir. He's <laughs> got 2:04 left on the clock here. Shotgun set. One receiver to the right side. One back with him. Just going with that kind of wildcat look as Deuce. Takes a direct snap straight up the field. And the deuce is on the loose. That's one yard left. Call it third and one. Buck 46. Oh, excuse me, fourth and one. Four down territory anyways. Comets have to believe they can get one yard. He's got Aiden Gaither out there on the far side. I like to see that out there with him and oh, Peyton Cotter. Aiden's a good kid, man. Got some hey, got some touches a week or two ago, too. He's a good kid, good athlete. Um, hard worker. Nice to see him out there on the field. Snap. Just powering forward there. Nice job. Nifty run. Enough for the first. And I said that, you know, really Deuce playing the quarterback position, so not really wildcat there. I don't know why I said that. Deuce is out there as a QB, so really just more of that QB lead on that previous play before. That's what happens when you get to talking about other things. And so with 50 seconds left here, more than likely maybe uh, one more play after this. Gaither in motion, hands it to him, bounces to the outside, shakes one off, cuts back inside. And minimal gain there, we'll call it one. On the carry there from Gaither. We've got 32 seconds left here, 35 on the clock, so the final play of the game here. We'll see if they just elect to let the clock expire or one run more run one more play. As again, getting some snaps here at QB. Alongside him here is Logan. Two receiver set. Shotgun. Two to the right. Or to the left, excuse me. To the left. Snap. Hands it off. Carter. To the left side. Bounces back outside. Open space. Oh man. Nice job there. Late from the Yellow Jackets, but enough for the first down. That'll be it either way as clock hits zero, and that is your final. Hinton Comets falls 40-6 to six to the Yellow Jackets. So that'll give us two weeks left, and we battle for third. As we're going to have on the road against Cashin next week, starts at 7 o'clock, streamed right here on HintComets.tv, and then we'll close the season at home against Sayre. Until next time, I'm Coach Allen right here on HintComets.tv.